Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, welcome to this week's show, and uh, me and Keith, of course, we're here for the next uh, couple of hours, Wi-Fi dependent, of course, uh, as usual, um, and of course, uh, with us tonight as well, of course, uh, hopefully to everybody's left, or maybe to your right, is, of course, Gary, the chairman from Highbury Swiss, and a living legend himself to my right, and probably to your left, is, of course, Julian Dix, so welcome, guys, thank you for coming in, appreciate that. As normal, I mean, good week? Uh, no. Had <laughs> um, two, two games today, played really well with both, um, but lost quite a few for each so, uh, and it's going to be a first for me tonight as well. Yeah. yeah I'll tell you later, we'll go for it. Go for it so. Julian first. He's going to tell me he's got a good referee, and that's what he's going to say. But our referee, he's the referee that's refereeing out there tonight, from Saturday, young Ryan Whitcomb. There you go. Uh, so shall we start then? We'll start with the Premier Division then. It was uh, Bishop Stalford 2, Burgess Hill Town 2, uh, Enfield Town 0, uh, Mersham 0, Kingstonian 4, folks in the Victor 1. Surprise that one? Yeah, big, big, big surprise on the result, but Kingstonian just sort of turned the corner a little bit with a few results, so we're pleased for the lead as well. Mm. That's, a, uh, that's a good result for them. I think they kick on now. Mm. Uh, another good result. Margate 0, Harlow Town 0. Are you surprised though? I mean, I mean <clears throat> yes and no. Uh, let's work that one out. Margate had a bad result up the week before, didn't they? I think they yeah. lost one nil, so it's you know they picked up a couple of injuries or got a couple of suspensions, but they expected it to be harder, but they've got down there and must be just grand out result, and that's what you can do. And uh, yeah, obviously pleased for our mates down there. Yeah, absolutely. Tobridge Angels 2, Potters Bar Town 1, uh, 393 there. Yeah, it's a bit of a bounce good. back for them as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a good win again for Steve, but it's um, yeah, quite a bit down for, mm. for them. Right? That's a bit lovely. Mm. Used to about 500. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Barking, let's see, the North Division. Uh, Barking 1, Deerham Town 0. Well, Justin will be happy with that, wouldn't he? Deerham seemed to be struggling a little bit again. Uh, I don't saw, they, they quite a, I don't think, did anybody see the tweet that Jason, uh, Justin put out? Uh, he was, was something along the lines of about centre backs, and you lost all your centre backs, and you had somebody who's going to play somebody uh, at centre back, uh, out of position, and then they got injured or pulled out or during before the game started, and he had to put in two young kids in, in there, and he, he, he just wrote you know quite a long right. statement about how grateful he was for the you know for the wins. Yeah. That's, that's good football. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to my world at the weekend. <laughs> Uh, still with that, they, they needed a result, didn't they, Barkins? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Basil and Neil, Berry Town, Neil? Uh, well, obviously Julian's got Berry this weekend and seen Basil then, so you can maybe comment on both of the side. Well, you might not know about Berry, but you will now. No, listen, for me, Basil and I watched them against Abridge a couple of weeks ago. Um, so they're a big, strong, physical side. Play Route 1, sort of big lad up front. Um, but again, as a, as a team, you have to deal with that, so. Yeah, it's uh, they they did they, as a really were strong, were physical. Mm-hmm. Again, but as a, as a team, you have to deal with deal with that. Yeah, so there is a good result for them. Make the time, so mm-hmm. can we all in one till we won two late goals are eighty five and ninety. Obviously, new manager gone in the camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they actually surprised you, David. It really did me because yeah. obviously we played Canvey pre season, and I know Danny well. I don't know if, if you know. People over at Canby, uh, Julian, but you know, he's sort of always been involved, and mm-hmm. I, I couldn't see him stepping upstairs to be honest, especially mm-hmm. with his age and whatever. And obviously, Mark Bentley's come in, mm-hmm. who uh, obviously was a great as well, um, who's another experienced manager. Um, but that surprised me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Grays four, Great Waker in three. It's a great game, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Right, get a few goals. Morden Tiptree nil, Abley one. Alex a copy of a 20 minute pounds. That's a good result for eight minutes. Yeah. Did you see any inside information? No, I was, I, mean, I was just, you know, just, just following the tweets and stuff, but they both had, had a good performance, good defensive performance. And, uh, and, uh, from what, from what I read on, I can see it. Yeah, with yeah. uh, a 2 1 almost bank holiday in there. Uh, Looked at the side. Brilliant side. Uh, Milnall Town 3, Haybridge Swifts 4. Look at your first game, yeah. Yeah, listen, the boys done well. Um, I said to them, all I asked for them was to give me everything they had and obviously work hard. And that's what they did, and they got the rewards. So for me, the referee was uh, was quite poor. Um, again, he gave them two pennies. The first one, 
I couldn't really see, so I can't really comment. The, the second one was an absolute shambles of a decision. Instead of the game really, I mean, we had a penalty as well. Um, instead of the game really being 4 1 5 1, it ended up at 4 3. Um, and it was a lot closer than you would have liked it. Um, but I said the boys, the boys done extremely well. Um, was it a good, did you get a good, um, did you get a good, you know, um, welcome there? I know it was, I yeah, this is about it on there. You know, they got that. You know, so Tim Manor said that it was you know, one of the nicest places to go to last year when we did that, didn't they? That's actually, well, yeah. The decent people there, very yeah. Yeah, I'm going to bounce in the last one. I said that's the only ground I've got up to. Yeah, they were nice people. I didn't get any abuse, so it's always good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Whitton Town nil, uh, Bowers and Pixie two. Um, I suppose James is going for it a little bit as well at the minute as well, isn't he? But uh, I know he's uh, he, he's you know he's tweeted a few bits out. As well, yeah, but, yeah, so he's a tough time. Yeah, it's a good result for Bowers though. Uh, keeps them going. They're, you know, they seem to be solid. I spoke to Robin the week to be fair. Um, and uh, yeah, no, they're they you know I said I, I don't watch all the games in the north, but I said it from the beginning. I think whoever finishes above Bowers will win it for me. And um, they put, seem pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, in the South Central, Bracknell Town won Belfont Sports one. It's the first drop points, isn't it, for Bracknell? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Bed- Bedford, you know, I think they're a decent side. I think they had a good result uh, in midweek in the Cup as well. So I think we got the uh, director of football on last week, didn't we? Right. So we've cursed him. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, FC Romania nil, Chipstead five. It's a bit of a trapping at home, isn't it? Unfortunately, they travelled to Hive, who we played Saturday in the uh, trophy. Um, Romania on um, Saturday, they won't find that easy either. Uh, Hazen getting seven, Ashford Town one. Well, there's two sevens in two divisions this week, aren't they? And um, two big sides. Obviously, Hazen getting yeah, a good side anyway. And uh, it's a, quite a local game, that one, I think, as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm surprised at that because we played in the trophy the week before Ashford and uh, oh, right. Big Sport 2. I watched um, <coughs> yeah, I watched, watched Ashford play uh, against Hamill Town a few months ago and they seemed quite solid. Yeah, I'm surprised they lost that one. Sometimes it's one of them, I don't know, you know, we haven't looked at circumstances, could have sending offs or whatever, it normally affects you. you the first thing you look at when you see a massive result like that is someone got sent off or yeah. you know, something happened. Uh, Mosley nil, Chesson one, attendance 14. Well, obviously they were treated to a, they were treated to a good game. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I've just spoke to Craig outside. Um, you know, I, I, I said this last year, um, Dave, about Miles. I, I feel for them. They're a small club over in a sort of Hampton way. It's run by just sort of one one lady. She does everything. She's the chairwoman, the kit washer, the kit man. You know, her family do the bar. It's right in the middle of a little sort of house and estate. And um, you know, they're, they're they're really struggling and they need help. And, um, I think this, you know you can always look at the league table. They're sitting rock bottom already. And it's mm. going to be a tough time for them. And um, you know you feel from them just need someone to come in, leave a little bit of luck, someone to come and help their football club out because you don't want to see them sort of slip away. They've been sort of in the league quite a way, and you'd want them to. And they moved out from from the from the south the league, this match league to, to the throwing one in a bag. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I said I, I, I spoke to Craig. He said they had enough chances to win comfortably, but nearly. Uh, had a penalty against him in the last minute that could have been a penalty he said but the referee kind of, the, it worked in his favour for once he said <laughs> so we're going tonight anyway um, South Park Neil Shell Fonts and Peter 5 again they're struggling South Park Mick's gone in there and he's he's difficult difficult when you move leads and like we just said but he's got a brand new side most of his team went to Dorking most of them you know, the other couples went to Met police, you know, it takes time to do the call. I thought a decent side. Actually, we played them in pre-season over at, um, down that way, <coughs> the Marlow match we played them. It was uh, you know, quite a strong side. Uh, two in a mission of United 3, Hartford Town 1. It's a good result at two, isn't it? They um, seem to be badging back, getting on with a bit of run. Um, again, they've a good side that sort of dropped down from the yeah, Premier League. They played us in the trophy, um, not last Saturday, it was last Saturday, wasn't it, the Saturday before. And uh, they didn't... Did Strong at all, if I'm honest, considering your side has come down from the division, you know, just didn't look as a strong side that I was expecting it to be, when, you know, and really sort of like, oh, not, there's no disrespect to them, but I, I don't think they got out of, you know, second gear really in the, in the, in the whole game, to be really honest. But uh, I was quite surprised at how, you know, sure as weak as they probably were in that game. Uh, 
Uh, Wolf Abbey 3, Uxbridge 0. Yeah. The man's doing it again. Yeah, he's doing well over there. Obviously, nice steam I've gone over. But, um, you know, it, again, new league, but they've seen really running and uh, it's another good win at home for, mm. for Wolf Abbey. Like we said before, it looks like to me it's going to be between them and Bracknell that's going to... Um, Who's going to win that league already? Yeah, they've got a great pitch there now. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah fair play to the chairman. Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember your time, but great if you go up to Wolfham Abbey. Um, he was trying to forget it. it. it yeah, it was an awful pitch. It was yeah, awful. The pitch was it was like right to left. Yeah, it was yeah. shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The graveyard behind you and the allotment. It was yeah. really bad, and fair play to their chairman over yeah. the last few years. Yeah. He's thrown yeah. some serious money yeah. to get it. I mean, I go over the bridge yeah. almost. Yeah. I mean, I go over the bridge almost every day. Uh, you know, I have to go to work or come back or whatever. Else. And you sort of have a quick look as you go over, and it, it looks like a three G surface when you go over the top because it's that green stuff. Yeah. 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 It's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where three Egham Town one. It goes up again over there. Where another one that's moved over. Egham having problems though at the moment. I think aren't they? Mm-hmm. But we had to, uh, obviously. Um, to come in last week or could, sorry this was it mm. was their old manager so they need to uh, find a few results mm. uh, Westfield 1 Northwood 2 he's done well since he's come in yeah, with them. he's saying what, what they've got over there and uh, I think that's a 4 or 5 wins on the bounce yeah. and did I see someone he said I saw something about him or well, somebody's player being called up into the England City as well yeah I, I, see, see that. I think I see something like that yeah mm. it was like flying around so it might be his young forward wasn't mm. it there with uh, uh, South East Division Ashford 2 3 Bridges 4 that's a big shock mm. that's a great result I said team of the week I'm not too sure if Craig put them in it um, but obviously Ashford are sort of the team in our league that everyone was thinking they're going to you know yeah. we've got to catch um, 3 Bridges who are towards the bottom who I've said that are oh, a decent side believe it or not have gone and got a big result and they've, 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 they've seen the turn to come a little bit mm. for them which is good Here's the other seven. Cray Wanderers seven, Famisham two. Yeah, um, I, you know, we played Cray the other week. They are a good side, and obviously, you know, congratulations to Tony getting the manager of the month there. They've got a few injuries, and the young lad, um, Freddie Boat, he's, he's got another hat trick, and um, I think a year ago to the date, they hit seven again from that exact Saturday. Um, they were a very good football inside. I thought Famisham might cause some problems strength wise, but obviously, they've mostly just got them on the 3G and just played them off the park, and it's a, it's a big, big win. East Grinstead won, Seven Oaks uh, won. East Grinstead, they seem to, you know, when they got that uh, win against each other, wasn't it? They, they seem to just all of a sudden just picked up, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they stopped our unbeaten on records, yeah. Um, no, they, they've got some good players down there, mate. Um, uh, Matt signed some decent players. I'm pleased for Seven Oaks, though. They've gone a few games now, um, you know, picked up some points. You say, Nick, Mickey Collins down there, you know, doing a good job, so. Um, yeah, no, they, they, they picked up some, some good players. Uh, Haywood Heath 2, City Ball nil. Turn the corner, Haywood Heath. I tell you, if you're looking, and I think you're going to see one out there tonight in a minute, one of the two we've set forwards, you'll ever see. Haywood's, uh, Haywood Heath have signed one as well, and um, we played in the beginning of the season, and I was impressed with them. They tried to play football, um, but the reports I'm getting now, they've got this landing, and they've got a little bit more room one, and they're starting to get results. They beat. Ashford 4 0 in the replay of the trophy in the week, um, and they've gone and got a result against a half decent single side, so they've done well there. Well, I know pre season last year, I only thought we got a picture of Paul Preston up against the striker from Enfield uh, Football Club, Regular FC, and it was like almost stuck to it all Paul Preston. He put Paul Preston on his, on his own shoulders, and he still would have been as tall as his head. It was just incredible. Uh, Hive Town 3, VCD 0. Yeah, that's us. Um, yeah, as I said to you earlier, Dave, we got into the game, and it's no excuses, with, with five players out injured. Um, we had no Charlie McDonald, Leon, and um, a lot, most of us, all, all forwards, have picked up injuries. Um, and we had 12 fit players, and to be fair, I brought a, a young 17 year old from our youth team on for our last half hour, and he turned all right. If we were at a centre forward, we'd have won that game. We played really, really well. We, we, we opened, it was open, them up for fun. We just conceded a penalty with 10 minutes to go, go in the first half, and at the time, I, it looked like it wasn't a penalty, and I, I said to, to Ryan, that the referee your game, who I do know, I thought our keeper got the ball, and you know, I said it was a big turning point. I, I won't gain nuts him. To be fair to you, he said if you made a mistake, you'd apologise. Well, I've watched the video, and it was an 100% penalty. 
So <laughs> live, I've, you know, I, this is the first. I, I'll apologise to him. Get him in uh, no, he knows. I've mean, seen that. Yeah. I've just seen that side, and I've apologised to him and said, "No, listen, you were right." Just sometimes it is different angles, but um, but yeah. Apart from that, we did play really well, and if that's that's the thing I can take from the game. I think if we were at their forward and or a forward, we would have won it. Felix Sports 2, Whiteleaf 2. Good result for Phoenix. They, <coughs> they said they played well. Whiteleaf did as well. They're up there. Um, changed the way they played a bit from last year. But um, yeah, no, it's a good result for Phoenix to bounce back after Horsham because they were 2 1 in the week and lost 3 2, didn't they? So um, yeah, no, they was, they was quite all pleased yesterday when we were all um, having a Sunday afternoon church going get together. <laughs> <laughs> First win of the season, Thamesmead Town 3, Guernsey nil. It's always hard for Guernsey, I don't really know too much about them. No, they don't. Um, so they, they have to travel over all the time yeah. and we go over there. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a day out, but it's a long day. And, True. Um, yeah, yeah they, they just seem to struggle coming coming over on the mainland. But Thamesmead were desperate for that. Tommy, you know, I spoke to him, he'd had a lot of interest. They just started to come back. So um, they would have been over in to get the first win. And as we said, I mean, Tony was on the show a couple of weeks ago, the manager of Guernsey, wasn't he? That must be so difficult, wasn't it? You know, to touch you out, he's trying to get players to have they must have to days to well. come mm-hmm. over and, and all the rest of it. And they, they, they end up paying for the team to... Did they pay for us to come as well? They put up, they put up for 20 pounds. 26. 26. They take over. And, and they <coughs> pay for all that as well. But none of the players get paid. Right. So... Response. Get good crowds on there. Yeah, yeah. 7,800, yeah. yeah. No, it's nice. It's a good experience. But it's, it's a long time. Uh, Winstable Town 2, Greenwich Borough 0. And that yeah. was a team that you put in, I think, it was Winstable. Yeah, and high. Yeah, no, listen, they, 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 they got a good result there. Like, as I said many a time, about Greenwich Borough, they were brand new side and they're, they're my new off the cuff team, but you don't know what you're going to get with them when they turn up. They're just all flair individual players. If they go a go up, you're in trouble against them. If they go a goal down, you've got a great chance of beating them. They're sort of that sort of side, and um, obviously, which is all quite a big, strong side, and you know, they're, they're, they're decent at home as well. So, the change in the team though, was that with Greenwich? Is that because of issues at the club, or is that because of just losing yeah, the players? Yeah, no, you know, it's issues at the club, and obviously, the manager. Yeah, like last year, obviously, it was documented that um, you know, the chairman died, and his brother was parent, you know, they, they, he took over, and then obviously, certain things happened in the summer. Um, Paul Barr, the, the manager left off, you know, before the, or, or got the sack maybe before the season even started, and um, they've got a new route. But all the, you know, they've had to start again with a new chairman and everything. And it takes time to, you know, even just to build a side. Um, you know, as Julian's going to talk to us in a little while about that, they've had to sort of nearly build a new club, which is a little bit difficult. But they have got some good players. Yeah. They have got some good young players. We played there pre season actually. It's, uh, it's good. It's good for young players. Though. Well, let's pick out some of these uh, FA Cup scores as well. We can we just try and go down up and grab this uh, too many as we go down. But so uh, the third, second one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Bath City three, Lewis nil. I'm quite surprised at that. You thought Lewis would get a result because of the Bath. I did, yeah. Losing to Eastern and Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I must admit, I thought for me, I thought that would be the the banker if, if you're looking at one of our teams to get through, mm-hmm. especially the way that uh, Lewis has been playing as well. Uh, so far at the beginning of the season yep. I was quite surprised at that one uh, as we go down end Brighton Sea Region Neil Torquay 3 you missed one there Dave so we'll go with that one first oh right yeah we'll go with a big one mate. yeah we said we said about you know it was always going to be difficult for Brighton Sea to get, like, play Torquay you know that, it's a massive game for the club that's, that's sort of come from nowhere really and done really well to cement themselves in a Premier League division so um, just you know they were obviously they haven't they, they gave it a go and I hope they enjoyed their day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Just trying to see which one I missed that. The big one, Dave. Oh, yeah, the big one. Well, Billericay 9. Yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> Billericay 9, Whitehawk 1. Whitehawk 1. Yeah. Do you know much about Billericay? <laughs> no, only what people send me. Must have been on Twitter and stuff like that. So, But no, I mean, I know obviously one or two players there. But. Yeah. Listen, it's, it's a big result in any football season. You know, they're, so they're, only, they're only meant to be a division above, aren't they? So like, yeah, a bit of a week in the, the south and do you want to in the prem at uh, uh, Eastern Prem there, aren't they? But so um but they've got such a five power up front bit of a key and obviously that's a that's a heck of a big oh. result. Crap was quite disappointed though. Only five hundred or something. Mm. As far as that. And they've got the um St Albans and I think they're gonna have that yeah. uh, yeah. at home again, so uh maybe we'll see they will let St Albans in the final. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I saw what chances I've made two on Saturday. 
Uh, Gloucester City 3, Dorking Wanderers 3. Yeah, good result for, for, Dor- for Dorking. Uh, be happy with a replay there. Uh, Hampton and Richmond Borough 1, AFC Hornchurch 0. Yeah. I thought that would be close. Mm. I thought that would be very close. So I spoke to you uh, last week and um, yeah, that's, you know, I thought they might have need to draw a ball back. With somebody like Gary being in charge of Hampton and Richmond Borough, I mean, would that, I mean, if you could draw a game to this team, would you look at that and think, at least we know what's yeah. sort of to expect yeah, in yeah, a yeah. cup game if you're going to be getting that. Yeah, you would. He, well, Gary's got that knowledge, isn't he? So. Uh, Home game Borough 2, AFC Sudbury 1. Good result. Got a good draw in the next round as well, Gary Gale, yeah. I think, if I'm right. Yeah. Um, so th- they just seem to be up. Get on these little FA Cup or FA Trophy runs. Oh, that's a good run. We knocked them out of the uh, FA Cup. Didn't yeah, it's the first round. Yeah, they, they got to the got right through against late night, I think. Yeah, they yeah. did lost two more yeah. trophy. Uh, where else are we going? We're going down to Hemel Hempstead five, Ramsgate Mill. Yeah, I was expecting a home win now, not mm-hmm. by as much because Ramsgate picked up. Mm-hmm. So got a manager in there, Hemel Hempstead. I'm not too sure. Yeah, because he's gone to uh, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hitchin Town two, Hastings United nil. Hitchin must be a good side because Hastings are a very good side and a very young, great footballing side. So, yeah, they've done well to beat them. Leverhead won Hamwell Town won. Last minute goal to Leverhead. Does me a favour so we've got Hamwell on the trophy on Saturday. <laughs> so, let's hope they go extra time, penalties, floodlight failure, everything. Um, <laughs> no, it's a uh, you know, 90 minute goal from Alfie Q, who I had, uh, who's on loan at Darnford, who I had last year on loan. Um, good prospect. But got me out of jail a bit. It's not going to be easy going to Hamill, no, no. whose pitch, as we keep saying, is no. unbelievable. It's the best pitch in non league football. It's unbelievable. Moneyfields 2, Worthing 3. I'd expect that. Moneyfields are struggling. They're not tempted out the round before. Um, obviously, Worthing are flying in the Prem. Uh, we're up to do it to do it. We keep going down. We keep trying some more. Met police, I know, not in our league in the 3 3. Yeah. Uh, as well, Coggershaw Town, Western Supermare 1, Coggershaw Town 0. I'd be disappointed with that because well, Western yeah. Supermare is, you know. Yeah, they are struggling, but they're struggling two leagues above them. So, yeah. as much as maybe confidence, but to be fair, they've done enough to submit a 1 0 win. So, it's still, there is still a big gap. There's a big gap from our, like the Premier League mm-hmm. to the North, or whatever you want to call it, in uh, all the three divisions. So, two league jumps a big one. Mm-hmm. So, FA Cup wise, who do you think that it's going to go first? Worthy? Harringay Bar. Harringay's got a great draw, I think. Mm. If I looked at it right, if they got the they've got the winners, it might be at Leatherhead and Hamwell. That's why it is. No, it is. So they'd, they'd be happy with that. But would you be I mean, this is good like Sherman Woods, would you be happy that you've got to play something from possibly inside your own, you know, in league or, or your own league or your own leagues? Would you I rather have somebody that tell me different? You want you want someone that's lower really that because you want to get kids into that first round first one. Big money starts to get yeah. Well, that's, the next round's worth twenty-five thousand pounds. Yeah, okay. which is big. Julian, when you played, did yeah. you look at anything like the, the, the qualifying rounds of the FA Cup, or was it not even a, a thought when you were sort of, you know, when you come in the third round proper? Is it? No, listen. As a as a professional club, you don't want teams below you mm. because listen, upsets happen. Mm. They do. I remember getting beat by Northampton, Wrexham, Stockport. Um, to, say, to say a few but it is it's always difficult because you're expected to beat them it doesn't yeah. always happen Some things happen in football as we know and like I said I've, I've been knocked out a few times by lower lower league clubs um, and it's not fit, a good feeling I remember when I played for Birmingham we got beat by Altrinham um, and my manager at the time Ron Saunders resigned after that so uh, do you sit there and think, well, some of these teams have won like nine games to even get it? You, you, you do. When you play, you look at them and you go, like you said, they, they, they played like six, seven rounds mm-hmm. even before yeah. they're facing you. So, so and the good thing about it is it's is about money only yeah, for the non-league clubs. It's a, no, no disrespect. They're never going to win. No. But the further they get, obviously, the more money they get, which stands them in good stead for the rest of the season. Yeah. It's funny because they talk about Upsets during the um, manager of Millwall actually reminded you, didn't he? He used to play for Crook, didn't he? He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, Oh, we beat him in the League Cup once. So yeah, he's got that. Yeah, <laughs> he said he saved one of my shots, but I'm going to read that. 
just with, with, with yourself, obviously, you know, it's such a great man last year. Do you sit there and go, I wish it was this year? Because of the money? Because yeah, obviously, yeah, it's double yeah, money. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was a bit flat. Get done in the week, we got knocked out yesterday. Yeah. Can't bang the trophy. Yes, yeah. so it was pretty bad. So I was cheesed off on the Sunday after the second one, but <laughs> I delivered it, it, it. You know, it doesn't happen every, every year, does it? No. Was you disappointed for all you didn't get the TV game when you played? Uh, excellent. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Although there was stack balls on, but, but um, yeah, it was the highlights and stuff. I, mean, I, would, I would give that we can swap back to the world. It was fantastic. Great experience. Yeah. Made great again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the sort of thing. It is possible, isn't it? All right, so, so we're talking about having go, they're sitting at the moment thinking, well, you never know. You go through that and then again, why? That's why they got through, you know? Yeah. They deserve it, really, because, I mean, that breaks us in our season. Mm. And they've been well again there, yeah. yeah. Good play. Mm. Absolutely. So, any, any big stories that you've pulled out during the week that uh, you've seen that you think of? Yeah, only back in the non league, mate, yeah. obviously. Um, you know, the, 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 the league's response to Jody, what he put in there, and I know we've got the, the chairman and also the, 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 the new manager in, and we ain't going to keep going over old ground, but I think it's important that, you know, I, I, was I surprised that the league have, have, have responded? I was a little bit, to be fair, but. After I've read it, I, I suppose when you read Nick's comments about that he's sticking up for the league and the integrity of the league and the other 81 clubs, I can sort of see why they've done that. But um, yeah, no, I think that's the only, obviously apart from Julian, which he made the page before Nick, which um, obviously he's a lot better looking than Nick, that's why he's mostly done it. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the big story. We, we, we said the story last week, mate. Um, we had to cover it. We, that's what we're here for. Um, and we had to give opinions and... and and, and I think that's what we've done. Uh, but everyone's there to uh, get their response. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yours? Your big story? I suppose the man sitting next to me, I suppose, in June. That was, uh, yeah, you know, it was literally, you know, looking on there and, you, you know, people were talking about different names and you could hear, you know, people saying, you think, oh, maybe Jim Cooper. And that was who I expected him to be, I'll be honest with you, when, when, when he sort of, when he, he was sort of floating about and then, sort of going through Twitter and it was almost as if I came across it do you know what I mean I was it, it was sort of oh my do you know what I mean type thing like that it was a, I don't, you know no disrespect to that means it's just in a detrimental way but I'm not a Hayford's fan as such you know because you know, we, we, we were able to but it was like I was sort of like excited to see that Julian was back in you know back in there and, 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 and being in it and uh, I, I think the shock was it. obviously because you know, when Julian came into Grace a, f- a few years ago, mm-hmm. you know, so people were a little bit shocked, obviously, the connection with the West Ham and, and things like that. And then I think the bigger shock was to people that hadn't been at Avery, so obviously Julian said he's watched a lot of your games, yeah, so a lot of Avery fans were, well, you know, Julian's about. But mm-hmm. it was obviously because only, you know, 12 months ago, you were sitting in a dugout at West Ham, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, yeah. alongside David yeah. Moyes. So you're sitting there thinking... Well, I was I was with Slab. I went with David Moyes. Sorry, I went with Slab. No, it was a big factor. I mean, experience there. You know, that was a big factor. Those two years were improved your knowledge massively. I'm sure. Yeah, of course it did. Um, Obviously, I went in with Slab, and it was it was an incredible two and two two and a half years. Um, Like you said, you learn so much. One, listen, I've known Slab for, for many years, but one, how he treats players. Um, and how he sets up his games, his training, and everything. But even like with Nicola's assistant in Edin, who was the next coach, Dan, like you learn different things from from different people. Yeah. So, and again, it's when things go wrong, how you put them right. Which listen, you have more lows and highs in football, um, unless you're in Man City or, or something <laughs> like that. But uh, but it's true. It's you learn you learn so much. But even over my career. I've, at the time, you, d- you don't think about it, but I learned so much off most of my managers. And listen, I had some incredible managers when I played. There people like Ron Saunders, John Lyle, John Bond, Graham Soonis, Harry, Redknapp, Billy Bond. Fantastic people. So, listen, they're all different. Um, so you do, you take up good points and obviously even bad points as well. Because listen, we all have bad yeah. points. We do. Um, again, when I was at Gray's, Perhaps I was a bit too bad tempered at times as a manager when you lose and things like that. And you have to listen. You have to learn to take it on the chin, and maybe not take it out on the players. Did you, and, did you learn that more when you went back to West Ham, or was it just 
Because obviously that was, when you left Grace, was that the next thing you went and done? No, no, I, I didn't, I remember when I was at Grey's. It's quite a few years ago I, I was at Grey's. Um, I was going around coaching kids and, and adults and, and stuff like that. Um, then I went and coached and managed the West Ham ladies. Um, but listen, they weren't associated with the club, just through name. And I really enjoyed that. Um, then obviously Slab got the, the West Ham job. Um, and he rang me up and said, look, I want to bring you in as a coach. Um, how do you think about it? And I was already yeah. up to par. <laughs> so, listen, it, it was a, a great, a great experience. Um, something many people don't get the chance to do. Um, listen, I, I played for the club and I, I coached the club and I, I did manage them in one Europa League game. So, uh, it was a great experience, which I'll never forget. And so, when, what, what sort of made you then sit and think, <clears throat> Haybridge is, is the right sort of fit for you because most people look as they said again no disrespect to any of our clubs but you've come away from being on the management side of a, of a professional premiership club mm -hmm. now you're sitting there thinking well you know what is he going to be looking at like 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 you know the championship or you know things like that so at the end of the day I mean no one gave me a job mm -hmm. apart from slap mm -hmm. um, I finished in 99 mm -hmm. and I said I got a job in what, 2014, 2015. So for them, 14, 15 yeah, years, no one gave me a job. So, so you have to, obviously, there's reasons why they don't want to give me a job. One, maybe because of my reputation as a player, possibly. Um, but listen, I, I've known Slav, he was a roommate, and we got on really, really well. Um, but it would be nice to be maybe... Stephen Gerrard go straight to Rangers or yeah. Frank go yeah. straight to Derby but that doesn't always happen no it doesn't it doesn't always happen so sometimes it's like I've known obviously Steve the vice chairman I've known Gary for, for a while and I've, like I said I've been going to Havers for I've watched many many games it's a club that's run properly you know, and they take a lot of interest in the youth which for me at any club has to do yeah. because listen they're, they're the future of football mm -hmm. so for me, it was a it was a no brainer. Yeah, would I, listen, would I like going to maybe Rangers? Like, of course you would. Yeah, I, I couldn't sit here and lie, but it's not. I've got a great opportunity to to basically grow with the club. Hmm. Why do you think it is though that, that say like uh, Stephen Gerrard, uh, you know, and Frank Lampard, and, and maybe even two on really sweet and Aston Villa, they can get those type of jobs, but no disrespect. When you was playing as well, you was as big a name as what those guys are. So, w what's the? Well, I think the thing is, is now they they've only just retired, mm -hmm. basically in that last two or three yeah. years. When I was, I retired in ninety nine, and to be honest with you, when I was retired, I was quite fit. And one because I finished through injury. Mm -hmm. Again, listen, I didn't want to coach, I didn't want to manage, um, but as time goes by, you want to get back involved because. Listen, nothing replaces playing football, but obviously the next best thing is coaching and managing and trying to put your experience on to, to other players and trying to better them. So when I was at, at Grays, I had like two or three players that went to play league football, which for me is, is fantastic. Mm. Did I make them players? Of course I never, no, but I, I given my experience and my knowledge um, and they went in and done that with Dagon. So mm. listen, there's, there's negatives and positives. That's what I was just saying about that, that obviously, you know, with going from West Ham to, to Havis is, is that you was back in the spotlight and people was like, oh, you know, and you were back in it and people, I thought someone would go, well, is he, you know, he is, that is what he wants to do and, and took a gamble, but to be fair, it's a, it's a major coup for yourself. Yeah. You know, I, 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 obviously, from your point, it had, did it come from that you, you was just watching the game and after that you said, you know, the vice chairman, but, well, we, we know we interviewed, we, I think we had about 30 applications, we interviewed a number of people, great caliber, but mm -hmm. caliber people of color was super, I'd say that. And uh, you know, it was, a, it was a tough decision again to, to, to make. But you know, I think Julian's experience at West Ham very recently, I think that, that, that's huge. His, his um, commitment and knowledge of youth football as well, and, and, and wanting to develop that side, I think was a factor. Um, yeah, and also the, the, the fact that, as almost like a fan, and knowing the culture of the club yeah. and knowing quite a few individuals, it was just a natural choice. Delighted, you know, it was just so it was such a buzz on Thursday night seeing the lads coming in after training as well. They really enjoyed the session. Mm -hmm. Do you put the first session on? Was it your point that afternoon? And 
there was a buzz about it, you could just tell that. that you does, that, does that help as well with the, with the case of, especially when you're sitting in there as a board, you're looking at you and say, right, you've got, a, say, a superstar name, or you've got somebody that sort of knows that the, that the league's inside out, back to front, maybe a bit more knowledge mm-hmm. than what the duty has got. Does that, does that make a, a little bit more of a difficult decision for you? Or yeah. Do you yourself, if you've got something like Julian Dix that's applied for you, that's going to raise every, every player they're playing because they're both really good because you've got number two they've got can't do with them can't because they're Comtis United player uh, in that part of the world the legend you know really top top pro as well probably, probably five other league games um, so we've got two 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 in the coaching side you've got manager and coach like that but we've also got Adam Drew as well you know, yeah. he's a, you know, very much a non-league man loves his football great at spotting talent Got him two players before Julian came along, the goalkeeper we played on Saturday, okay. you know, Chris and uh, Chris A. And also the striker, uh, Dan Walker, we got him from South yeah. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're, we're excellent. Yeah, I mean, he was, yeah, yeah. Was, you know, he scored two goals from Mr. Bouncy on Saturday, so we're going to have to win his you know. So, you know, that's where Adam's really strong. So I think that combination of Adam, Julian, and Carl, I think we're really strong. Is that you that yourself then rely on those people? So you get the knowledge of the, of the leagues that, you, that you're in? Listen, to a degree, yeah. Um, I've known people, like you get non-league agents now. Mm-hmm. When I was at Grays, you didn't have them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I got to know a few at West Ham. Listen, you, you speak to them and, and they tell you what they've got or what players they can get. But if I'm talking to Adam, I, and I just say, for instance, I want a left back. He has to have three key things, even before I would look at him because at the end of the day, it's no good having somebody just can do one thing. Um, you need them to, at this level, you need them to do certain things. First and foremost is, is to defend. Has to have a good left foot. Um, and has to obviously take instructions. Um, but again, it's, I said, at the moment is worked out. We've got obviously training tomorrow. We've got quite a few new players coming in, hopefully. Um, and we're going from there. That was our- Obviously, you've, with, with Julius, you've got a, you had a good squad anyway of players, you know, and you know we we'll come on to maybe why it wasn't firing for you at the beginning of this season. But when, was you sitting there on, on, on a sort of thing where if you didn't, if your team, your squad wasn't very strong, that someone like Julian would come in and it would take a bit of time to spin. But really, with his knowledge and the ability he's got, he can even transfer the, the players he's got now into the potential they should have anyway. That's what so he's sort of got, you know, a good leg up and all that, you know, he's walking in and now his experience can bring that through. That's right, I mean, uh, we, we have lost some characters from last season, like Jack Corby, that when, you know, he comes to Morgan, he was a real character in this room. The UK obviously will have to look at City. Um, uh, and, 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 and certainly, St. Bansy's gone now, he's, he's moved on, but, um, yeah, you know, so quite a few of those real characters from last season are not there. And, and, and some of the guys who came in, just take time to bed, bed in, you know. And the, the dynamics change, you know. Yeah. Changing rooms, and uh, yeah, we just didn't, we just didn't get going this season. And, and, but Saturday was obviously was a big, uh, you know, big turning point. Really, obviously, Julian's appointment there, and, and there was a real buzz, mm. and, and the, the work rate was fantastic. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I said to someone on the phone today, you know, when when you know, Haybridge came down and played and played us, you know, and sent yeah. off and, and all the rest of it. I still think with Tim, he would have better side on the day, you know, and I'll get shot down in flames for that, but that's exactly what I'm saying. It's not a good period, but the three goals went in, but then after that, we were three two up, you were all over us again. Yeah. You probably should have probably should have scored. Should have you know, so for me, I made a statement, I think it might be reading the Craig here on, you know, when I was going out, I said, depending on what you think, you think about eight match. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny, I was sitting, I was watching a game a couple of, about a month ago, I was down in three bridges and I was sitting next to, the centre midfielder from Walsham, I mean, uh, and you had him. In the, he was talking to. Oh, the stop, the yeah, stop. he was. Uh, he was a Walsham. He's gone now. Right. He was, yeah, he's been about. And um, he said, "Oh, we've got some side called Avery Swifts in the FA Cup." And I went, "They were decent side there." And I, I, I think they beat you four. They beat you four, 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 three, two, one. four three, in the end. Absolutely, yeah. But um, you know, and it's, it's, so when you look at your squad, which we all do, and I was sitting thinking, and we've got to do the show. Are they got injuries? Are they struggling? Because you still got a strong squad then. Yeah, we were, we were missing Ryan Henshaw that day because he was pretty much suspension for his tackle year. So uh, that, was, that was telling. He was telling. Right, yeah. So, 
So your next game, once we spoke, is obviously Berry. Do you know yep. how much have you, have you Not really. I, I know the know the manager, Ben. Yeah. Um, I played with him in Canby, so um, I know him. And again, last season I watched them against Abridge. Um, but again, this, for me, football's about my team mm. and how we we can put on to Berry, how we play. They said, we play the way we can do and put the work right in we did, then Berry's in for a tough game. Mm. Again, it's not about um, just worrying about the other team. I think sometimes managers get too worried about who they're playing against um, and then not worrying about their side. So again, like I said, if my players are all fit um, from the side from Saturday, so they put the same work right in. And we have a great chance to win. I think uh, also in the very other play last season was in the score against us, Kamal Rando, you know, the striker. Mm-hmm. I think he's moved up. That was in the same way. That's good. Then. That's a good point. We always say we've always had a second meal. You know, one of those teams that you expect them to be pushing for playoffs and stuff like that, and they seem to have a sort of just disappear at the end, or they seem to be table. And, they're always one of those teams that you hear people say at the beginning of the season, well, Berry Town State are trying to get promoted this year, or, you know, that, that sort of thing all every year, but it's almost flat and you see the most they do it you know, every year. It's, I think it's difficult at this level because players just get up and leave. Mm. Like you, you're better players. Yeah, like yeah. Listen, you're never going to stand in somebody's way to play higher, or, or if that's the case. But it's the same when I was when I was at um, Great as well. People have been on the road for an extra £10 yeah. now. Which is, is difficult. You can't blame them. But if it's a case of, listen, I've spoke to most of my players. Um, of course, they want to play higher. Yeah. Do they want to get there with Haybridge? Of course they do. But if not, then you can't stand in their way if they want to go and play yeah. conference football or, or maybe league two. Mm. But obviously, with yourself coming in, that is also another draw for players because yeah. obviously these players do want to play. You know, when we were saying about my centre forward, I've got you know his pedigrees, he's ex Charlton, he's been a the youngsters want to play with him. Mm-hmm. Whereas obviously they want to maybe learn from yourself. Yeah. Is whereas and this is just going to say about where we say about professionalism of the league, the professionalism of, of, of your team is is set up that way. You know, you, you you can bring an extra thing that they're not used to. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, with, with with Charlie with us, he's there like half hour before even they are up, he's doing the proper warm up, he's doing his yeah. stretches, you know, but all the youngsters will listen to him, well, they'll listen to you because, you know, you've come from a club that do that in his life. Yeah, listen, I've, I've been lucky enough to play for Birmingham City, Liverpool and West Ham uh, most of my career, and was I a model pro? No, I wasn't. Um, Depends on which way you look at it. Well, well listen, I manage it. Yeah, you wouldn't play for teams if you wasn't. No, listen, I, for me, I, I was. You I got one in wow. twenty-eight games, yeah, that's but that's from that's from playing for like everybody get the benefit of the day. But again, I was one that never warmed up, never done things like that. But again, it's about what you do on the pitch what you do for 90 minutes on that pitch mm. if you like I said if you go out and give everything you have and, and do your job then you have, you have no problems but as soon as you start to deteriorate down um, then you start having problems all I will say is the game outside must be really interesting because we've been watched by the AD manager so it's got to be really good game <laughs> <laughs> Secretary of the League has come and waved at us as yeah. well. Hi, Kelly. So I'm going to come. No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's also looking forward to what's, what's the sort of plans you're looking for for, for Haybridge? Bigger budget. Not <laughs> 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 this is. Not this At the end of the day, football's about progression. This is last season with Jodie. Listen, they were fantastic. Mm. I watched them. They were head and shoulders above most of the teams that come to. Mm come to the ground um, but again it is just about progression and for me we've gone in listen the boys were fantastic on Saturday as I said but they have to continue that they have to do it week in week out listen, we all have bad games we all make mistakes but there's no excuses for their work rate to drop because they showed it on Saturday in my first game listen 10 games time it should still be the same um, and for me if you do that then you have, you have a chance of winning more games than you lose do you still get this, the same sort of passion as you did on a Saturday morning when you woke up this week as you did 
when you put your boots on? No, nothing will ever come close for me, come close to playing football, yeah. ever. I miss it every day. Listen, I retired. If I was like 35, 36, mm. and I had to retire because of old days, then fine. But I was 29, mm. and I've been through injury. Um, nothing will ever replace that for me. But listen, managing, coaching is the next best thing. Mm. And listen, just trying to get players to be better. Do you think with that injury, you put that across to the players that you're, you're going to coach and manage to whenever you finish? But you know, it's one of the things I said is that you just don't know when your, your last game of football is ever going to be. No, you don't. You don't. You don't know when your last mm. breath's ever going to no, be. So right, you, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I was I was 29, um, and it. It was made for me. Listen, I would have carried on on, mm. on walking sticks and things like that. But listen, it's, I mean, I, I suffer now, but again, it's, it's just hopefully I can pass something over to the boys at Haybridge. Listen, we have some good players. Yeah. And like I said to one or two of them, they should be playing higher. Do I want to keep them there? Of course I do. But it'd be wrong for me to stand in their way if they want to play higher. Um, so listen, for me, if I can make somebody go and play leagues higher, then they're all well and good. Do you think the level of football's changed since you was at Grace, which is about seven years ago? Um, yeah, it's in this. My, I, I watched, obviously, Abraham Zassin, they had a lad there called Luke, who was, and I watched him, and he was a fantastic player. Mm. Ability was unbelievable, both footed. Um, Listen, he was he was Spanish, so he, he drifted in and out of games, but not not many. Listen, I, I watched twenty odd games last season, um, and he probably had one or two that he thought he didn't do enough. Um, but the rest of them, he, he was superb. And you look at players like that. Did I have anyone like that at Grays? No. Um, but I did have good players at Grays. But again, obviously Ryan Henshaw as well. He's a, another good centre half, and that will only get better. So, I mean, are you surprised that Luke hasn't sort of played more? Say, yeah, he's only yeah. playing about. I mean, he's just like, he, started, he started one game. I think that was all in the league cup away. So, right, he scored. He scored. Yeah, he scored. So, he scored. Yeah, he scored. So, 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 he between the size of him, and he's come in and scored goals as well because they had the read up front before, didn't they? And was weird and strong. So, I mean, obviously, Danny knows, but he's obviously maybe tried to drop him down a league to probably to try and get if he can handle that. But he needs to play games, doesn't he? So, when they're at that age, that is the most important. A lot of centre forwards and forwards have come out of the league recently and done well. But the same thing with, with um, the lad, the group that left Wilshire Power, the one player of the year for Cheltenham last year. Bristol City signed him, and he's not playing there at the moment. So, you know, it is a big jump. Mm. And like I said, when you get your opportunities, you have to take them. But you do need them opportunities. Yeah. And for me, Luke is more than capable of playing that division. Mm. I mean, the one that has played him, Nico, wasn't he? Well, Nico, hard to report, but we just said the young Freddie there from, from Craig, you know, he's coming to the league last year. I think he's 18, 19, he may be 19 now. I don't know if he's going to be great for me, too, anyone. But he's scoring goals for fun, it? And, and he played against us last week. He's got the statue, he can, he can run, you know, run the line as well. And he's, he's someone that I don't think can hang around too long. Decent. So, Gary, I mean, when you got through some applications in the last year, you were in the department. Was, was, it a, was it a case of you know, when you saw Julian's name on there, was you surprised? Or? No, not at all. No, I was, I was very pleased, obviously. And, um, so he spoke me out last year, he was good friends with Julian. And uh, it was one of the first things I said to Steve, you know, when the vacancy came up, you know, will Julian apply? And he said, oh, he said I think I'm, I'm pretty sure he will. And I must say that it was. So, yeah, very, very good. But um, <coughs> the calibre is amazing. Uh, some of the people that, you know, that, that came forward, I was really chuffed to meet them. Mm -hmm. yeah, they wanted to be considered, but you, you can't be too many people. And what I did notice, just the first time I've ever had to recruit them out, is that players get very unsettled very quickly. Yeah. And whereas we wanted to sort of take our time and spend a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so obviously, we, we say did, 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 did Jody's resignation surprise you? 
Um, it, it didn't really, no. I mean, uh, you, you could see that I think the whole team was getting on top of it a bit. And I think, you know, they worked so hard. You know, most people that just gives you 100%. They don't get a week off in probably two or three years, you know. Um, it did seem quite sort of stressed over the whole um, so I wasn't that surprised by it. And the Basil and Kane, I think, was a bit of a sort of last straw. He, he had actually his own on Sunday. We talked him around, and I just thought it was just, just one of those things. Uh, the Sunday was after the, the Horsham game on the Saturday. He, was very, he felt very let down. Uh, but a few players who couldn't get couldn't be there for the game. Um, and then, you know, we really took, took it to heart. So, so I was driving back from Basel on Tuesday night. Well, I watched the, the, the interview with the Basil and Phil, and I sort of said to Dave in that. It, after obviously you spoke about the game, it looked like the only way you put it, it was having like a football breakdown. It was like it, everything had got to him, and, it, and that does happen. Yeah. That does happen a lot where you sit there and just think, oh, you know, yeah, results ain't coming your way, and, it, and you, you put it in there. And like you said, it, it, it did look like it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's stress like any, any job, you know. Just, I've seen it. I've seen the top of that one. The, you know, the, the old Leeds manager it was the last, um, the old Leeds manager won the league in '92, um, Howard Wilkinson. Mm-hmm. When he, you know, he was just packing in the leagues, it was, it was a terrible state. Then being on match of the day, I thought, that guy's not well, you know. It was just, it was horrendous, the stress, the, the stress in that. Um, yeah, it's good. Then everyone's different, then. people handle stress in different ways. They so, dealt with it as well. But, uh, yeah, he will be back. So we are laughing awesome. because someone's got a message on Facebook, which, yeah, we're not going to read it out. No, no. I've got to say, I've been working with for two seasons and he was, he was a joy to work with. I'll be all surprised around the managers that are out there that haven't got jobs. So I mean, well, no, we just looked at the boxes. We said, well, they go on and on and on. It's like anything in the program. There's loads of managers there as well. As Julius has been saying with himself. But you know, Keith Rowe was getting someone you know, Keith Rowe was getting a great job. Over there, mm-hmm. and uh, another person you know, we both know that Glenn Little's got in the joint marriage today, yeah. Yeah. which is a little bit of a surprise to me, to be fair. They took the job themselves, <laughs> knowing what Wingate's like financially wise. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you know, Aaron, you know, he, he's forever telling everyone on Twitter that he hasn't got much money or whatever, <laughs> anyway, so it's not new. Um, and you know, they've got in there, and, and you know, like Keith and I know Richie Graham that was, that was helping as well uh, uh, have done a fantastic job at Wingate. So, as we said before, I thought that would be ideal for Jim because he was at Met Police, who was on exactly the same sort of string. Um, and when you go in, and obviously, you know, Glenn, what he's done as well with Nicky, they're, they're, they're going to walk into a side that plays on a lovely pitch, yeah. but sometimes that sort of financial side, especially at that level, can be can be frustrating. Yeah. It can be frustrating. I thought both of them, and Basil came, I was going to well, that's down on. I think it's Nicky's, Nicky was coach of Steve, which was Nicky yeah, before that. So, so yeah. it's one little chess in outside, by the way. Glenn, Glenn's one of the great characters of the football. It's fantastic. He is. He is. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, a real, real buzz, sort of, real, real sort of um, last minute sort of guy. You know, he also knows Glenn. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. He played, he was still playing fast at the age of 41 yeah. a couple of years ago. He played against us. Yeah. yeah. But it's surprising, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the calibre of people that are out there. You know what I mean? With some people with them, you think to yourself, wow, do you know what I mean? You play with some of these people like that. This is like it. Well, somebody came yeah. and I used to be diving in the middle of the You just look at it, you look at it in that, in that sort of eyes. Everyone, of it, yeah, it's, I just think, not only football itself, especially like the league we're in now, and this is where I'm going about, you know, I, no, I, I said last, last week, with Joe's comment about it not being a professional run league, which is completely wrong. You're getting more professionals coming into it, and it's making it more professional. People are doing things right. They, you know, a lot of managers want to, want to manage at this level, and they take it as seriously as they did, even if they're in the, the leagues above, and everyone wants to get there. And it's, you know, it's more well run now as you go up the steps. You know, the the, 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 the conference, which we call it the conference, is basically full time football for everybody now. It's the old division for, or well, basically, it's basically just as good as Division Two is now. Um, and the money flying about, so that is why there's so many people looking for that sort of job. Then, you know, even people in the, as we've heard, and, and, and obviously Julian's finding out again what, what the wage bills are like now compared to maybe what it was when it was at Grace, is that people can earn a decent living out of it, and that's why there's so many people about want to be involved in it. 
So, I mean, I mean, one of the guys here to tell us a little bit about Haybridge, but you might not know too much about Haybridge. And well, fun enough, we're just a uh, uh, history book on the club has just been published um, back, uh, back in September and uh, we formed in 1880, so they date back right to that time. Um, got, uh, went through the divisions as, as teams do and got into the Ryan Eastman League, I think it was back in 81 2 or 83 4, something like that. Um, <clears throat> and the first big manager that, that got them up to those levels was a guy called Joe Sutherland, who used to be used by the Dagenham. He brought a lot of Dagenham players along with him, so there were a lot of top Dagenham players in the 70s uh, that, that got them up through the SC Senior League. Um, and then, of course, Gary Hill joined the club. Gary Hill was manager from about 85 to 92, 93, or something like that. And, uh, he really broke the club. I think he got me into the, into the, the Ryman Premier League. And they stayed in that for about 10 years, and then dropped down, I think, in 2009 to, to the North. So, yeah. it's, it's a really good club. It's, it's, mm. a, it's a proper it's club, a members club. Yeah, I've always loved going up there. You know, pitch is good, great. Right? Pitch is good. Is nice. what, 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 is the, what is the new, the, the, the new, the, sort of the new stadium? That's what you're looking at. The new yeah, it's all behind. It's just, uh, that's, that's all, that's all fell through the back in um, a couple, about a year ago now. I think the council drew their support for it mm. because of local residents and that sort of stuff. So, they wasted about 10 years on it trying to. With that forward, sadly, um, I only sort of came in on the tail end of it. But um, you know, we, we will stay there. And I think what what happened is that the, the cup run last year, and some of the evening games that we had with the replays and stuff, just made us realise what a great team that is. No, it's, it's so. Like, what, what have you got in terms, like in, in depth as, as a club, reserves or academies, and is that what you're looking to push? Yeah, reserves, or? obviously, the reserves folded at the end of last season. Um, we're looking to get another twenty threes to get one inside our junior um, Academy, that's certainly something we want to get sourced out as well because um, we'd like to get 3G down. We pretty much made the decision as, as, a, as a club to, to go for the, the 3G route. On the main pitch? On the main pitch, yeah, on the main stadium, yeah. Unfortunately, it's. You and me both. That's <laughs> 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 sad. But I remember the old yeah, Oldham pitch yeah, and yeah, yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah. if you go out here, it's different, but it's yeah, yeah, they're much better than that. We took the velocity actually. Okay, yeah. Uh, I look at bounce pitch on the occasion. Financially for the club, I always say, so I understand, but it's just uh, it's, it's not for you, Julian. Not the play on it, but as you said, at the end of the day, financially, it, it has to be done because it generates money, and that's what keeps non league clubs afloat. Well, I mean, I, I know when, you know, when Harlow appears, I mean, was, was there at Harlow, and I mean, literally had no new sites. No reserve side, no moving sides, no nothing. And within the space of probably, I don't know, six months to, to a year, we went from having you know, one side, shall we say, um, to having 21 new teams, two girls teams, no, two women's sides, and you know, and reserves as well. So it's sort of all of a sudden came. Well, if you want an academy which is financially yeah. the way you go, then you, you know, you do need that. But um, of course, yeah, the two academy sides there, as William was there in there as well. So it went from you know, the ground itself never been used to all of a sudden it was being used Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, and then you know, the boss is doing his nut because no one wants it on a Friday yeah, night, do you know what I mean? What's going on Friday nights, do you know what I mean? So it was one of those things where it was just getting played on constantly throughout the day, top of going down there, bringing down, yeah, like, yeah. Um, like the teams that were coming over from, say, like China and South Korea that were coming over to visit Spurs, etc., etc., and they were having a training session with, um, uh, come to me, come back to me. But, you know, one of their ex-players was out there doing a training session with them as well on the pitch as well. So it was they, they'd love that to come down. And it was. It was well, when 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 to sort of plans for that to go in? Did you say football fan going to Australia for what money you can for? Yeah. Not really. No, I think that's, that we would probably do independently of that. Actually, we'd like to use the foundation for to improve the, the, the rest of the stadium on the weekend. The change we wanted to extend um, and improve the clubhouse a little bit. We'll have a bit of a sort of painting party down there this Wednesday for him, I've actually so. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> not that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just slightly up a little bit, but we, we want to, yeah, I think, once you've got 3G there, the turnover through the bar, yeah. the uses is, we'll just go to the roof, as you said, right? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I, you wake up to open it, other than the likes of Bromley with their new, their new uh, chip on the side, um, you know, I think it was probably one of the best ones I've been to. So I want to you know, clubhouses and stuff like that, food and stuff like that. What do you mean is it a club you mean? Well, it's a stadium, or it's a pitch? No, it's not it's the, the, club club house, the clubhouse itself. No, I mean, yeah, it was one of those ones where... It's not going to be one. No, it was just... But it was, but it was a... I don't know, 
it's one of those grounds that always, you know, when you always say it's the atmosphere, yeah, when you're in the fire, yeah. it's going to yeah. be a yeah. white cone, you wait to it's like white cone. Yeah, it's tough to work, it's having sticks a bit. Yeah, it's not good. Just with that, is that obviously you've got Ward and Witten that are right on your doorstep. Is there sort of, and if you're going to be the first one out of three of them to put a 3G down one, is there much facilities that sort of way for 3G for your training? Do you, do you train 3G at the moment or do you train for it? At the moment, we're, we're at the ground, um, but obviously, as the winter draws in, you can't keep training on the pitch. So I think they end up going to Billericay, um, playing so school. It's, it's school. Tip, it? They were last yeah. Season. So, yeah, playing school is like there's a school in Morden up the road there, and that's pretty much full of books. That's 3D there, and that's just all way book down. So, demand for it. Oh, the fact that, yeah. The, the amount of like I said, you go as a club like Haybridge, they go to play, they got to pay for it. Yeah. So that's obviously saves, yeah. might be just £200 running back, but it saves yeah. money. And over the course of the seasons, a lot of money you save, yeah. a lot of money you generate. And listen, like I said, sticking up with three different units, as Dave said, which I'm gradually don't like saying these right, but with the, with the new teams you get, it's then players that come through for your club and you're not looking for elsewhere. And it is a progression thing. As you go along, so we well, used to Sudbury. I think so, ASC Sudbury are very popular. Yeah, but one club I think it was a benchmark club, really. And it was when we went there last season, they, they told us about this sort of like share issue that they to run the money to get their 3G down. Uh, they gave me all the paperwork and they didn't. Uh, we, could, we, we could probably get similar sort of thing about it. Uh, we've got, got some people that will pledge some initial money and then see if we can just get that done. So I'll be getting that sort of level next few months. Going yeah, for Jim, with yourself, what sort of connections will you, can you bring apart from the obvious with your West Ham connection? Sort of, will they still help you out maybe with youngsters? Or? Well, you'd like to think so. I mean, obviously, I know people like Justin Edinburgh mm-hmm. and people like that. Um, that you, you can speak to them, you don't have to go around the houses, yeah. you can speak to them right. direct and say, Listen, I need a, to say, for instance, right back, I need a centre back. Have you got anything? Um, and Hopefully, like this, and you as a non-league club, you just hope like the the higher divisions and the league clubs help you out, but financially as well. Yeah, I mean, because it is tough at this level. Um, it, like young boys, it, it, it pro clubs are probably on five, six, seven hundred pound a week, and there's obviously no way a non-league yeah. club can do that. So you like you would like the, the clubs to help you out in that way as well. And listen, the again, kids coming in to play at this level, listen, it's physical. So it makes them grow up. Um, like I said, at West Ham is under twenty threes, um, and most of them basically are, are, are under twenty threes, like twenty twos, twenties, and things like that. But this, and what we're watching now, it's like it's proper football. Mm. It is like grown men kicking each other mm-hmm. and everything else. So again, from, like with the young kids coming through, um, maybe seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. It's just, Come here. This 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 will make you a man. Yeah. Because when I when I was sixteen, seventeen, we played in the reserves, like yeah. combination league, and you played against pros that were coming back from injury mm-hmm. or wasn't getting in the first team at the time. And listen, it, it was a it, it was a good ground game. Yeah. So again, for me, it's uh, so the kids that come and play yeah. non league football. It is yeah, it's good. Like last year, Julie, you probably remember Toby, Toby Stevenson who was like that. Got him on loan to Orient, um, and he was super. Yeah, he was about right. 20 games, and really good with that 18. And he got a contract to Charlton Athletic, he's in under 23 now. So he got plenty, you know, we both benefited yeah. out of it, you know, we got to play these games. So, so I said the academy football now, probably, it is a lot different than what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play, it's, it's, yeah, it's more football, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Competitive, and they do need to do that. So, no, you I'm played against Hampton Richmond, you know, he was playing for Conference South, then, you know, it was a great test for him, and he still did that. What are you looking at for, obviously you, you mentioned you're really pleased that you're training both twice this week to get them. Yeah. Are you more of, um, are, you, are you just, is that how you're looking to adapt it, that you can get them and, and hopefully try more on a training pitch, or are you, or are you looking at, at the matches, because obviously going back to, you know, the Alex has shrunk this year, you, there's hardly many midweek games, I'll say about that. Um, one me, I, I love the midweek games, and you, I prefer games and, than some training in, in mm-hmm. that way, but are you more looking just to, you know, I knew I need to get me in training. Yeah, and... that's that's how I look at this. And I've, I've gone in on Thursday. I've had a training session. Um, obviously, play Saturday. I have two training sessions this week. Um, for me, that's good. 
I mean, I think Steve told me we had a game on Tuesday and I went, no, I don't want a game. I just want to get the boys in, yeah. um, get them training. Um, listen, Tuesday's going to be a hard, hard session. Thursday's a bit more a bit more lenient, um, obviously, for the game Saturday. Um, yeah, listen, once you've got your team and once you've got your squad, listen, you want to play games. Of course you do. Um, that's that's what that's what we're here for. So, again, until that's the case, then like for me, two days training every week would be good. If it was up to me, I'd have them in three times, but I'm not sure the boys would uh, would like that. Well, they're learning for something. Might be saying no. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, but the weather's nice there. Yeah. So how did you get the Spanish boys in? I mean, there's some kind of connections. There's not a chance really, because the first one was Will Brown. He's been with us two seasons now. He's just over two years of joining us. And he was at Neiman Market in the Cold League. And just literally came over here. He was a good player. He played business now over there. And he got jobbed as a waiter. Um, and he just came along and he was in reserves. And after that, he was in reserves. And so he was in reserves. He was in the first team. For him, and he's been there ever since. He literally played every game. I think he played 66 games last season. At the certain one he had, it was just different class. And he then arranged a coaching week um, when about I think sixteen lads came over from Spain and Argentina. In fact, three of the Argentine lads we brought up in our house, four of them in fact. Um, and it was, it was very good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> West Wing. Very good as well to these kids, and they were great. And Ted, amazing. <laughs> they couldn't speak English. We couldn't speak Spanish. So it's quite using Google Translate. <laughs> and the first night they were there, my wife said so much, well, a cup of coffee, and, yeah, coffee, coffee. What sugar? Yeah. And they went, six. Like, no, nah. you mean, and you count them up. They had six sugar, they all had six sugar in their coffee. So gone for a bit of cold leaf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, and that's how it happened. That's how Luke came along. He was one of the lads who came along from Spain. And the first thing, and uh, that was, a, I think it was a cheer. I went on to watch the first team train. And the Spanish boys were on the next pitch doing a bit of training. And they slapped Luke out straight in. And I just said, who's that? Who's that guy down here? That's Luke out. He's pretty good. And literally, the, from the first five minutes or so, I just thought, no, he's, he's good. And he, he went straight to the first team for 30 goals. Yeah. It worked out quite nicely. He did another one this year, and we got a few more. So he got um, one maybe his debut on Saturday, Jim, didn't he? O'Daly Martin. Yeah, and yeah. Set the mid. Um, the Bayo or something. But he, he made his debut his first goal. That excellent goal. And there's another lad that was on the bench, um, Alejandro Cioli. So, yeah, the nice sort of compare record of Spanish boys. What are you paying? That's what I'm paying. Yeah, 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 i am that, 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 that is the that is the thing in this league. You can all, all the players think that they're uh, tippy tappy footballers, but it ain't, ain't about that. Ain't about that. It is the hard work. Yeah. It's funny because when we did the first first coaching school last year when Luke came, I did actually email all the boys in the clubs to say, "Come along, we've got a training match on the Saturday. Come along, let me see the players." And, uh, no, I didn't. No, no, so, uh, so, you know, they might have seen a Luke or what, or um, mm-hmm. but, uh, decent player. <clears throat> in fact, one of those we did have Elias Siligato, he played a few times this season, very good player, he's gone to Witten. Unfortunately, he got an itchy feet and he's only been just a few more. I thought that's what he had to do. Good lad, we'll have him back tomorrow. Julius is a shot. Julius is a shot. It was a good lad again. Obviously, the, the, the question's come to yourself. Well, no, to be fair, if Julius watched a lot of games, who do you see your main rivals in the league? Um, listen, I went, I went and watched Bowers um, the other week, and they they were they were strong and physical. They're some good players. Yeah. Um, but as I said, it's, it, it, the games I've watched at this level is for me is who works the hardest in the games and how I want the, my players to play. So if they do that, then they have a great chance of going down the leagues. Mm. And like I said to you earlier, do I worry about other teams? No. Do I worry about other players? No. Um, because for me, this level is much of a muchness. Um, but like I said, like like every level, like I said about 
West Ham beating Man United 3-1 mm-hmm. and then they go and lose to Brighton yeah. that's football at whatever level that's football yeah. and it's the same at this level as well mm-hmm. so again football is about hard work like you said it is about hard work first and foremost Listen, if you've got ability great but if you've got ability and you don't work hard there's no good for especially at this level there's no good yeah. so for me you have to have a, a combination of the two so West, a West Ham support side. I mean, can't, we can't not talk about West Ham. Why? Yep. I mean, was you there for the last game? At, uh, was you, was you, was you yeah, 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 yeah. We had the last game against Man United. Horrible. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. Um, one because I played for West Ham for eleven years at the bowling, and I mean, I, I do Q and As, and people say, "What's the best stadium you played at?" And for me, it was Upton Park. I played there for Birmingham City when I was 17 and it was horrible. It was a horrible, horrible place. I played left back and I was obviously up and down the chicken run and getting abuse and things thrown at you and stuff like that. But on the flip side of that, when I signed for West Ham, it was the best place on earth to play football. Um, one, because it was nice and tight. Um, and listen, and all they want. Like, like most supporters, all they want is for their players to give everything for that shirt, that badge, for them, and things like that. And, and listen, I was one of them, and we had a great relationship. And listen, I would, I would never forget that. It was the best 11 years of my life in football. Incredible. So that, that, that whole thing there must have been... The, the, la- the last day, obviously, Man United... Um, I remember we come out of the hotel and we're getting towards the ground and the Barking Road in Green Street was, it was gridlocked because there was like probably about 25,000 people just standing in the road and we, we couldn't, couldn't get to the car park. So in the end we, we got to the car park entrance and, we, like, and there's police that are put like their shields up so we could walk through. We couldn't get in the car park. There was that many people. And obviously the Man U coach got trashed. I mean, ours got trashed. We had our own fans throwing stuff at our coach. They thought it was a Man U coach. Um, but listen, it was, it was, um, and obviously we won. It was, what a send off. What a send off. But like I said, unfortunately, it's flat side. Yeah. And I mean, I went down there a couple of months ago and I looked and horrible. So yeah. It does hurt. It does hurt. Listen, I was only there 11 years, and but there was people been going for like 60, 70, yeah. 70 years. There was a woman that come to the training range. She was 94. Mm. She'd been going there like 90 years. She remember her dad taking her when she was yeah. four years old, put her on the crate, chicken run, watch the game. Well, my, 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 my mates are feet too, but the chairman, they were West Ham fans. Yeah, anyway, West Ham fans, so it's one of the other dogs of any. And um, yeah, they 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 they, sh- they want they're struggling going to any games at the new place because because of that reason they yeah. just remember that you know their dads and all that's gone. Right well, the thing is, like you said, there's, there's people that they're actually actually scattered at mm-hmm. Upton Park and, yeah. and things like. That. There's a lot. Of, listen, there's, yeah, there's a lot of memories there. Listen, the Olympic Stadium is an impressive stadium. Mm-hmm. It is, but it's not Upton Park, yeah. and it never will be. If you go back to just about your career, where well, you mentioned it as well a little bit about the management, maybe you haven't got the job because of your reputation. Mm-hmm. Um, as a player, when you played, did you enjoy having that reputation? Loved it. One because it, it gave me, um, and like listen, I, the people I used to hate playing against was people like Real Fox, mm-hmm. Franz Carr, yeah. Tony Daly, because they were rapid. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. get books. Yeah, they were rapid, but. Back then, when I played, you could give them three or four smashes, and then yeah. the referee goes, listen, do it again, I'm going to book you. But you knew you had one more. But after the first one, if you caught them up, no, you know they weren't going to come back. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it was a case if you've gone in and they've slipped you, then you're in for a tight time, because obviously their confidence was growing. Um, but like, like it was, it was like whack him on the halfway line. That was it. And... Luckily enough, I did most <laughs> most times. So, uh, but yeah, of course I did. This my reputation obviously went before me with referees and things like that. Would I change it? No, of course I wouldn't. When you went to Liverpool, and I've got to ask because my other half's a Liverpool fan and all my family from Liverpool, 
Um, one was it sort of did, did, did they ask you to sort of change the way you played? What with Graham Sooners? <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> That's <laughs> no. Um, it was, it was at Liverpool. Well, I'd say Liverpool player because Gwen Sooners was yeah. one of the best. No, listen, I, to be honest, I didn't want to leave West Ham. Yeah. Um, it was the decision was made for me, um, but I went there. I met Graham, and I went to sign. It was black was black, white was white. There's no grey areas. It was what it was, um, and listen, I'm joining joining one of the biggest clubs in the world. Um, I played with some. Great players like John Barnes, Ian Rush, Robbie Fowler. I mean, some great, great players. Jan Mulby, and it was a great experience. How was that walking out of the, out of that tunnel for the first it's, time? Then? It's like walking out at Upton Park when they sing Bubbles, yeah. and obviously they, they sing You Never Walk Alone. It's like even now, like the, I've got the airs on the back That's of my neck standing one of the up. That makes me good, and it's, it? incre- it's an incredible place. Mm. Again, listen, Upton Park is magnificent, Anfield is magnificent. Mm. Um, and when they start, when the music starts, then they take over. Yeah. It's unbelievable, mm-hmm. absolutely unbelievable. And listen, I, I enjoyed my time. Graham resigned, um, and Roy Evans took over. We didn't see eye to eye at all. Um, and it's just a case of how long I was going to be there. Um, Birmingham come in for me, want me on loan. Didn't want to go on loan, so I was twenty five. Um, Tottenham come in for me I would never go to Tottenham um, as a West Ham player <laughs> um, but then then Jamie said like, my dad wants you back at West Ham and so, again it was a no brainer for me um, but it was it seemed to take forever and forever and obviously when that day came it was again it was it was incredible and my first game back I think it was against Southampton, I got booked. So, and I got booked once in 28 at Liverpool, yeah, which yeah. don't make sense. When, when you booked, it's quite another obvious question, but why don't you think there's players like you around anymore? just think it's, it's been taken out of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, like the right, they say it's a non-contact sport, right? It's not a non-contact sport, but there's there's ways to tackle. You can't tackle from behind now. You can you can show your studs now because it's dangerous. You can't use too much force because mm. it's dangerous, which is pathetic. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're going in for a full bloody tackle, you have to use force. That's just the way football is. To say someone like yourself then during the season that managing Haybridge and through the youth ranks, you see a, a young Julian Dix, a young Roy King, mm-hmm. young Stuart Pearce. What, what would you say? What? How would you? Like, yeah, like the, but like the ma- sort of player, yeah, but like the managers, obviously I know it's different time, but the ma- like the managers said to me, but it's the same as like people like Wayne Rooney. He w- he was the same, and people saying, mm-hmm. oh, "You've got to calm down, you've got to do this, you've got to do this," and if you do that, then you become a different player. You're not the same person. So if you've got like a, I don't know, a boy of twelve, thirteen years old who's very aggressive, kicks people and things like that, it's long. Is he's just not going over to yeah. somebody and booting them? Yeah. If he's doing it in tackles, listen, it's, for me, that's, that's mm. the way to go. Mm. Um, because one, you have to look after yourself when you, when you play football. Do you think that the gap, uh, this is what I was saying earlier, with, with the academies, that they take that away from them? Well, they, of course, it, uh, yeah. It's not a case of, I mean, when, we, when I was playing in, it was when I was an apprentice, I was like 16. Um, I was playing against the first team, and my first team was Pat Vandenay, Mark Dennis, Noel Blake, Mick Hartford, Martin Cole, um, Howard Gale. Dead leg, wasn't it? Yes. But that's what I'm saying. You you play, you train with them people, yeah. and literally they will kick you black and blue. Yeah. That's what they would do. So you had to look after yourself. Yeah. Nowadays, it's not is not the case. Um, has it been taken out again? Yeah, of course it has. Yeah. But from like the kids' level at the academies, mm. um, that's, and that's unfortunately that's the way football's gone. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think it's going to come back. No. Just again, we're going to go back to small the manager side to, to the West Ham thing. It, they do, you know, you, you've, you've gone into a brief slab and, and, and the managing side. Last year, when things were going pear shaped off the pitch, obviously the fans with the obviously the ball. And mm-hmm. things, how did that affect you as managers? And like your day to day, is that something that you haven't sort of sampled 
before like especially when it's your well, game? I, I did when I was playing because we had the, the bond scheme in West Ham um, yeah. and they were asking people to pay £975 basically just for the seat mm. and I, I come out in the papers at the time they're asking people to pay that kind of money and we were crap mm. we were awful we were at the bottom of the division and they're still asking people to pay this money so I, I turned around and said, listen, it's an absolute disgrace. Um, it was in the papers. I got fined two weeks' wages. Um, but listen, sometimes the, the fans, not sometimes, a lot of times, the fans need to be stuck up for it. Yeah. Um, and they did take liberties back then. But listen, football has changed. And unfortunately, like football now, at the highest level, a lot of it is about money. Mm. It's Man City. Have some great players, yeah. but listen, they work their socks off mm. as a team. So did Liverpool. Yeah. Um, so again, at West Ham, we, this is enough. I've been there. I've been there long enough, and we do go through good times and we do go through bad times. Um, but going through bad times, I personally believe makes you a stronger person. Yeah. And listen, they need to be heard. Of course they do. It's their club. Mm. How was it though? Actually, in the dugout, did it affect? You? It didn't affect me. I mean, there's there's people having a go at Slav, um, having a go at some of the players that got taken off. Um, but listen, it's, you have to deal with it's it. Hard, yeah, I mean, they're entitled to opinion. Do you want them to have a go at you, call your family's names? Of course you don't. But listen, they're, they're upset. This, that's their club. Their club's going through turmoil and they want something done about it. And the only, not the only way, but a lot of the way they know is to have a go at people. Um, would I be the same? Yeah, probably, of course I would. Do you think the off, the off field thing, though, with the hatred they had to the owners, did that affect you on the training ground? No, no, no. no. Listen, as, as a professional footballer, you have a job to do, is to go and play football. You, whatever you get, whatever money you get is irrelevant. You, know, you have a job to do, you go and do it to the best of your ability, you work as hard as you can every day in training. Every day in games. Now, if the fans see you doing that, it's going to stick by you. If you don't do that, then they're going to have a go at you, and they're tired to, of course they are. But ain't hey, that's not just at West Ham. That's it. Yeah. That's it. All clubs, it, it, every level. Yeah. Same like we're watching a game out here. At the end of the day, you have you have a duty to your supporters if come and watch you play tonight. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, good. So it's obviously saying that you can bring forwards to a region. A lot of the players, youngsters, must sort of look up to you and ask you that sort of thing anyway. Yeah, they do. Listen, I've, I've, been, I've been in coach the under 11s at Haybridge and the under 40. Listen, some of the under 14 players are so, so good. Mm. Um, the sessions I've put on, a lot of the adult teams I've coached struggled to, to do the sessions. These kids were just popping the ball back for fun, like one touch and things like that. So, is yeah, I mean, they asked me certain things. Um, how much did you earn and stuff like that but it is it's again like what was it like playing it like you said playing at Liverpool what was it like playing against Man United what was it like at Old Trafford and, and this and listen I was I was sitting and talk to people all day about football um, but as I, as I said to, to some of the boys to get paid for something you enjoy doing is is incredible as it is, a, listen, it is a job. Yeah, it's not, it's not, I mean, you get paid for it and you, like I said, even when I played, you got paid well for something that you love, love doing. And that's what I say to the, to the kids, listen, it's not bank money. That will all come once you start going up the ranks. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you're there and... Do you, do you think that these, the, the younger ones now in non-league football, especially over the last two years, have got more of a chance getting into the programme than they did maybe only, have, I would say, five, ten years ago? I think the, the the kids have because, like I said, that Haybridge under fourteens, some of the kids mm. were, I mean, so so good, but better than some of the kids at the academies that I've watched at West Ham. Yeah. And I used to coach the West Ham ladies. I used to get there an hour earlier, and watch maybe under tens, elevens, twelves, thirteens. Watch their efforts. Some of these kids at Haybridge mm. are far better than than why is it? But again. They just need a chance. Yeah. But like you said, when when you get people, obviously like Jamie Vardy, mm. he's gone up through ranks, Ian Wright, yeah. and and Stuart Pearce to that's just like name a few of them. But they do have their opportunities. But because as a kid you don't get involved in pro clubs, listen, non league clubs now. 
you can, you can still. This is what I'm saying. Over the last few years, like I said, we have had like it's a good power. Obviously, even from last year, you, you, you even said about the boy with yourself. Um, what's the name? Uh, Lamar Reynolds has pushed on. You know, all these clubs. But when you start banging goals in, I think some of the clubs that can't afford to go yeah. out and get all these are now looking down and going. But, but there's plenty of players like that they in are. non-league, there is. and the thing is that the people it, it, it get now is the people that score goals. Yeah. For a defender, yes. it's tough to break that barrier, yeah. and a midfield player is tough. But if you're playing, you're scoring thirty goals a season. Yeah. Someone's going to go. Hang on a minute. We we'll take the gamble on. It might cost yeah. us thirty grand. Mm -hmm. Today's football is nothing. nothing. Yeah. So again, now you cost you thirty grand to go. Right, listen, here's your opportunity. Yeah. Go and take, like we said with, with Luke. Eh? Do you, do you, do you, it was Jamie Vardy that sort of broke that thing. You know, no, I, I think that before. That, I think well, no, no, the Jamie Vardy thing maybe got put more because when Leicester won the league, he came, you know, he's come from there to there. But um, as you said, you know, Stuart Pearce come through. Yeah, yeah. All, all yeah, of yeah, yeah. the Will Slater, a lot of players coming since Vardy. All of a sudden, since that Vardy story was put out there. There seems to be a large influx of players from sort of our level. Mm. Well, I think so, also what uh, Julius said right at the beginning, there's a lot more agents around at the moment at yeah, this yeah. level than what their level was. You know, my phone don't stop. And you're going, really? Like, you know, back up kind of a bit. There are so much around now that are pushing. And I've, I've noticed in the last two years that a lot of players that normally football have got agents as well, which yeah. is also you look at. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I spoke to somebody the other day, and I, and I said to him, like, He's just left the club and not only, I said to him, like, what's your ambitions? He went, I want to be a professional footballer. He's 24. I said, look, I said, I'm that person for you. One, because I, I know a lot of people in football and I, and I said to, to Gary and Steve, I would have no worries if we have a player that's maybe a great centre back or a great left back or right back or a striker that's scoring 15, 20 goals a season to go, listen, because I, I, it's a, to jump to the Premiership is obviously a massive jump, but to go maybe to Division Two if I think he's good enough, and I would go right. This so so listen, take this boy, mm. just give give him an opportunity because he will score goals. Yeah. So again, like I said, people want to progress in football. Mm. Then, like, hopefully, listen. I would I would always always help people progress. Have you seen anybody? I was here in there a week or so, but I mean, you're expecting to say, see people that you can say, bring something up, say, with the guy playing, maybe not for your side, but for another side that you've seen, and you know, that you can turn around and go, oh, I think he's a bit special. Um, like, but the one the one that stands out for me was Luke. Um, I watched him do some things that I haven't seen many people do before. Um, but again, it's about. All right, you, you're taking him on loan, but you have to give these people opportunities. He might have one bad game, but you still you still have to persevere with these people, because I truly believe he's he's good enough to to progress it at that level. Um, if by the county don't re-sign him, he comes back to us. Then listen, do I want him to play for me? Of course I do. But if I have an opportunity to ship him out to, to somewhere to progress his career. So no, I have no worries in doing that. And I'm probably Gary sitting there going, you, 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 shut up. Um, but it, it's true. Listen, we, we all want, like, maybe the 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We all want them to progress. Of course we do. That's what football's about. Yeah. Well, especially with social media around. They've all got little video clips themselves now. And, you know, <laughs> even this week, I've looked on there and there's four or five players put on that they're free agents already. It's, it's, it's a massive thing now. It is, yeah, of course. It is. You know, plus, you know, TV greatly, you know, it's like you get them phone up saying, uh, oh, Dave, uh, Craig gave me a number, can you do me a favour? Can you get some footage of me? I went, Well, yeah, I probably could. And I said, But it's going to take me about four or five hours to try and pick out all these bits and all the stuff that I've got. I said, I haven't got the time to sit there for four and a half hours and try and pick out all the stuff that you need. But, but I had three lads in pre season say to me when I was trying to sign them, Do you have the games video? And I, was, I knew it was on, so I said, Why? Well, obviously, if I'm too, well, people are going to see me. I'm coming mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. it is, it's one of the things mm -hmm. that they teach it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's true. It is. You know, it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. We had, I mean, I've got to ask the questions, Gary's here as well, but there was a, uh, the tweet that you showed me the other day, wasn't it? The, the funny tweet about it, certain, certain parts on the body and whatever else in a tweet. And I think the original one of those was from your uh, 
Hayridge oh, yeah. site. Yeah. I mean, that was just <laughs> sensational. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's so good along the lines of some of that is shot, mate. It's gone in off the, off the players, uh, private part, shall we say, something like that, wasn't it? But it was just the way it was actually tweeted out there. He was, he was out there and you think, I'm going to change that over here. Someone's going to change that over here. No, I did change it, but it was just absolutely superb. I mean, how much control does a club have then over their sort of social media side of it? I mean, if you've got a, somebody that may be doing um, the TV channel or they may be doing the Twitter feed for you or an unofficial Twitter feed for you, do you have much control over well, that? Actually, you've got a TV channel. Yeah. 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 It's great for um, sponsors and stuff that they can see that they can get much more exposure mm. if they put advertising boards up and stuff like that. So yeah. really push back on. But <clears throat> Twitter and stuff, you know, you, you've got to be careful because um, yeah, some, some people put stuff in their own name and sometimes use the club logo. We did have a problem with that last season when one of the, one of the junior clubs someone was putting some political views out you know, with, with, with a Hayley Swiss logo. I mean, you, you can't do that. You know, you went to the government on that. Um, it's got to be strictly football concerned. You've got, to be, you've got to be careful because you know, some stuff gets on there. Yeah, you see, you would see stuff that Jamie's done himself personally, but then, then you know, I, I had to sort of distance the club from that. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. He's not out. Yeah, so. the chairman's put that in there that you've actually said that they were not yeah. you. So it's just, yeah, but it's difficult. As, as managers, you do say things, and sometimes you do forget. Right, but it's in touch with the club. Of course, he is. Everyone is. 100%. You feel strongly about that. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yourself, though, Junior, as a, as a manager now, I mean, is, is social media now something that you, you, you look at and think, no. you know, guys can no. up? Listen, I used to I used to be on Twitter before I went to West Ham with Slab, um, and I come off it, um, but not because like people have become me listen. I've had that all my life, but it was like people were asking, so, "Oh, can you get me this? Can you get me this? Can you get me this?" And it was like fifty, sixty a day. So I come off that, then then they started like on LinkedIn. They mm-hmm. they would like mess me on LinkedIn, so I come off that. Um, listen, I I wouldn't go on social media now, so it's not. What I was saying, so, social media helped me out with a little bit of research today. It goes well, the things going on because over Christmas your 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 Christmas Boxing Day could be busy because Christmas Day is quite busy in your house, isn't it? With my daughters, you mean? Or, it, someone's birthday is on Christmas Day, isn't it? Are you in your family. I see on Twitter. No. Not Christmas Day. Oh, I thought it was Christmas Day. Come on then. Oh, wrong then. Research didn't work. It's on the show. It was just December. And my daughters are the 23rd of December. I have twin daughters, so it's obviously well, 29 now, but which is quite One expensive. One of them watching the show tomorrow, she said. Uh, yeah. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No. But I mean, with your players, though, with social media, I mean, you've got to be careful with them. Listen, at the end of the day, you, you have to you have to trust your players. Mm. You know, I mean, they're, they're not kids; they're adults. So you have to you have to have some trust with them. But if there's things out there that harms the club mm. or harms certain things about the club, then you have to say, "Listen, you can't do that." Mm. You know, I mean, you, it's like. But we, we spoke about it the other day. Um, there were some things on on social media which I didn't agree with. Um, but again, you have to, you have to. Trust the players to a degree. It swings around that you do, you can get a lot of information from it, especially as a manager. There are video clips, there yeah, are yeah, clips yeah, yeah. and things like yeah. that you can get. And you know, I'm forever on it. It is, yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. It's yeah. Some like of the tweet things I, you know, I only follow bits and bobs of clubs, but you know, the, the YouTube channels are quite good. Yeah. Nowadays that are I think not. Harry bought Marco Burgers off a of video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think George Ware's thing came from. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so then that, it's not always good. But listen, like you said, you, you can you can go on and you could like put a player's name in and you yeah. can see his highlights. So, yeah. They don't put the bad points on, but no, they put the highlights yeah, on. So. But talking about highlights, I mean, something that I I think would be uh, ideal for the league is, is that if you had so channels. We get to get clubs that sent their goals. And I'm, I'm talking about the goals that actually sent their goals into a central person. Uh, and they sent those in there. You mean you guys? No, not necessarily. I'm talking about anybody. I'm talking about anybody. The conference do that, don't they? Yeah, and they sent it in. And then that way around, you can, you can someone there can meet all together, they can put it out there. All right, I know there's going to be, say, like, I don't know, 
club A that's going to have an issue with the, you know, with the league or have an issue with this one ain't going to play out. Club B's going to have an issue with one team so they don't want to play out. This one's got that. There's always going to be that issue where you're not going to get all 41 games in, in, you know, in the Boston League and you know, there's so many highlights in there. But I just think it'd be, so it would be quite good for the league and a promotion for the league if they sent all the goals in to a central yeah. person and lead them all together and it was, they yeah, were there yeah, and the show was there. Well, so we played high on Saturday and, and I will say, um, that was video on the game and I've watched the highlights today and if you go on and you've got, the, the man's content is so proficient. It actually is like a little mini match of the day. He's, he's bang on what he's, what he's on. He sounds, it's the, it's the best one I've seen. Mm. It's the best one I've seen. So a few teams do it now. Yeah, yeah, well. I didn't ask you that. They, they always do what they're saying. They're very they're good, aren't they? Yeah, that's good. Uh, obviously, maybe. But there is, there is yeah, a yeah, team's that's, that's, that's pretty average. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, it is, but it is one of those things where you know, you've got um, probably more teams now that, that, that will do highlights for games and actually don't, probably don't. You just think you did. Where if you're a manager and you're looking around and someone said, oh, well, you know, that player has got, you know, got a crack on the weekend or whatever else, you've got to try and troll through loads and loads and loads of, mm-hmm. of footage to try and find that. But again, going out. back right, to, to, to when Julian, it's about seven years, I think, Grace were maybe one of the only clubs around that did do that. Yeah, they did do it. They, yeah. they did do it. And now nearly every single club has done it within, the, within that sort of space as well. Mm. So. Like I said, the players love it, but even the minute you can, you instead of now, like tomorrow night, I'm meant to be going down to Earl Bay and watch them, you can you could watch it somewhere else on TV, right? Even though I will be going to Earl Bay. Yeah. That's yeah. a nice club, actually. It, it is. Season. It is, but I'm just about slow. Yeah. 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 No, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, because they have my. And this is, this is it doesn't come down to money, right? <laughs> this is so controversial sometimes, really. Um, 17, 16, 17 years I've been managing, not once has the team said to me they wouldn't leave a pass on the gate for a manager. They come back today and said no. Mm-hmm. So the league and the Kelly's out there, and now they do need to do a manager's pass. Because you do want to go to the grounds, and you aim for that. Not wanting to pay a no, tenner, of course. But how many you go in to a week? Mm-hmm. So get your chairman's pass brought back in and get the manager's one out. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for the hospitality. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. There we go. That's all right. No, no, no. They don't get Wi-Fi, don't they? Yeah, the one thing for me, and I, I don't know if you, if you want to tell the story or not, but I said, but I said, I said to you off here, and, uh, and I know we, we spoke sort of, um, I didn't realise this as long ago as it was, it was probably four years ago when we, when we spoke, but there was always, for me, every time someone mentioned your name, that story that you told me about Lucas Bevin sort of, Sticks in the back of my head all the time. No, that's true. So you can keep telling it because I forgot it. <laughs> but he told me that yeah, week as well. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, this night, the last time I met Julian, we were having a beer at Bud. No, I didn't say that. Yeah, right. It's a nice pie. I didn't say that. So, but it's it just, you know, some, some of the, I mean, you've got stories out there. I mean, what's, your, what's the, the what's sort of the highlight sort of story for you that you know, in your career with, with West Ham and, and, and you know, Liverpool, etc.? Listen, that they you can the stories I have you can put on there. Um, <laughs> listen, the other day football back then was a, a drinking culture. Yeah. Um, listen, it's I used to drink Jack Daniels on a Friday night before games. Um, but listen, that's the way it was. My warm up was sitting in the bath with two cans of Coke and a Mars bar with my boots on. That's what I done. That's what how I not got through games, but that is how I I warmed up. Um, obviously not on the Friday night, but um, that was it. Every, everybody had different. Did it change when you went to Liverpool? No. You still done that? Was still done, exactly the same. Yeah. Because obviously, but back then we had a physio. Yeah. And it was your own warm up. You just go out and do your own warm up. Mm-hmm. You didn't have somebody doing it yeah. with you. Um, that's what I'm saying. Even at this level now, they have yeah. like fitness coaches and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So they have their warm up already done. We didn't. And I remember uh, Rob Jenkins, who was our physio at, at West Ham. He was he was an absolute fantastic bloke. And we'd have a shot of brandy before we went out. He had it in his little medicine bottle. John Fashion, you know that used to be? Yeah, you did. Imagine doing that now. Yeah. Rob's dad was the physio before. Was the physio before Bill Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And they, they, they were fantastic. Well, there's a couple of times I think my own team's drunk the bottle before they've gone out. <laughs> but it was. <laughs> back then, it was, there, there was plenty of stories. But What was the highlight football-wise, though? To be honest, I mean, just playing football. Mm. I just love playing football. Um, from as young as I can remember... Remember when when I was at Birmingham, I was I was a number ten. At, it was an inside left then, um, and <clears throat> back then it wasn't a case of you had like twenty two, twenty three in the squad. You had the squad of like fifteen, sixteen if you were lucky. When was it Birmingham? We had a player called Brian Roberts who came from Coventry. Brian got injured, um, and it didn't. Monday, yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, didn't have a left back. So the, like manager called us in. We're in training. Went, who wants to play left back? I went, yeah, that be me. Main Road, Man City. So <clears throat> I went, yeah, yeah, I'll play. And that was it. I've stayed there ever since. Um, and it's, like I said to, to pick like the players now and kids now, it's easier coming from a centre forward backwards. Mm. It's difficult when you go forwards from like a full back to try and play in midfield to try and play as a striker. But listen, I was, I was comfortable on the ball. I had a decent left foot. And I loved it there. I loved it. So I scored plenty of goals and, and things like that. So you look at you look at them things. You think like that could have been a turning point in my career. Was so I a good number ten? I thought I should do always. Like, <clears throat> no, no, I was a, I was a number ten. I made my debut against Aston Villa at Birmingham, which is obviously a local derby. Oh, gosh, yeah, <laughs> we drew nil nil. My Liverpool debut was against Everton. Unfortunately, we got beat two nil. Um, so it's. And I'm, I'm just blessed that I, mm. I made a professional football. I had, I had a good living out of it. I enjoyed every minute. Where did, um, you, come, where, where did you come from? Originally, I was from Bristol. And what, what sorts of teams were you there before you sort of got picked up? I played um, a team called just normal Saturday sides, Rally Sports, Bucco Juniors. But there was a team called West Town Harriers, which were um, like the youth team of Bristol City. And I remember I was like 12 years old and Alan Dix, who wasn't my dad, come up to my dad um, and said, like, we'd like your boy to sign schoolboy forms. And my dad said, like, yeah, what, what's your plans for him? And he said, he might get in the first team by the time he's 23. My dad went, right, son, come on, we're going. That was it, took me away. And then I left home at 14 um, Went to live in Birmingham. I signed schoolboy forms for Birmingham City under Ron Saunders. I went to school up there, lived in digs up there at 14, which which was hard uh, when I was 14. I hated school anyway, so I go and mix in another school. And obviously, everybody knows why you're there. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't wait to sign apprenticeship forms. Um, I was lucky. I was, I was guaranteed apprenticeship and I was guaranteed pro. But it don't mean that you're going to make it, obviously, because things happen. So, again, Birmingham City, then Ron Saunders um, gave me my, my first break in football. And like I said, with the players I played there, mm. they, were, they were some... Um, I mean, listen, they were, they were good players. Yeah. Like People like Mark, who, who was my hero mm. when I was at Birmingham. Um, what a player he was. Yeah. I but, remember that the ref, injury he got. Yeah, yeah. Dead leg, yeah, up his yeah. scar was yeah. like the length of his. Yeah, yeah. split in it. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. You mentioned your dad there, too. I mean, your dad obviously was a non league man himself. Was yep. Played, played senior level. Was, man, was he manager of He's Froome? manager of Froome. Froome. Um, he used to. We played him in the FA Cup last season. No, his sidekick was Brian Drysdale at the ex Bristol City. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, he had the. It, listen, he was always playing football. So the old man. Sort of yeah, they are. Yeah, listen, my my dad would never let me go and watch him play football. Never, just in case he broke his leg or things like. That. He would never let. I've never seen my dad play football. Only in charity games and things like that. But even charity games, they just kick each other. Yeah, <laughs> and that was it. Um, and I was the same. Like, I used to playing testimonials. So I used to kick people and things like that. So, but yeah. And, uh, Apparently your dad passed away long. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. Well, he passed away the day before, I, the day after I got the West Ham job. Wow. So I rang him and said, like, I've got this, next day he died. Wow. So it was obviously heartbreaking, but at least he, he, got, to, he got to hear. So, uh, but yeah, some things happen, that's life. 
That's what you can't. You know, ask you about this is Bobby Moore I've done many um, interviews for because he used to work for the radio and, and stuff like that and I remember there was a time that I was getting sent off I got sent off three times in about 20 games um, and everybody was abusing me my managers the only people that stuck by me were the fans the players and I remember doing a, a Bobby Moore he pulled me over um and he said, like, you, you're struggling at the moment. He said, don't worry. He said, he said it'll pass. He said, it'll pass. Um, and he, he said, listen, you, you're obviously a very good player. The fans love you. He said, listen, you're at the best club. He said, it will pass. And listen, of course it will. At the end of the day, I can't keep getting sent off and, and things like that. But for people like that, and people, I mean, Alan Ball was another one. He said nice things about me. Um, Alan Hudson's another person said nice things about me John Bond John Bond was my manager at Birmingham and he was really incredible yeah. unbelievable unbelievable as a manager like a man manager I mean Harry was Harry was good mm. but John Bond was was another level and he was one stopped me going to play for England under 17s and 18s because he didn't agree how they played football because John was just basically you're in your own six yard box, you're playing football out of it. Mm. He was one of them. And he said, all they do is just kick it. He stopped me going. Yeah, he stopped me going, yeah. yeah. Which, <clears throat> this is my manager. Back then, what the manager said, you can't, and that was it. He didn't argue with him. And that was it. But yeah, he was, um, I remember when I went and signed my first pro form, it was under John Bond. And we played Luton. I played left back, played Luton. And I had a, a really, really good game. And next day's, he said, like, we want you to sign professional forms. I think, okay, he said, come to the ground. Um, didn't have a car, so I get on the bus and went to the ground. And, and, that bit. and we had a chairman there called Ken Weldon, who was like a little Danny DeVito, but he was a, he was a car dealer, like a scrap dealer. Um, and I always got on well with him. So John pulled me in the office and he went, like, how much do you want a week? Back then, like, first year pro was £80, but I was 17. So I went, I want 140 He went, you ain't gonna get that. I said, but you asked me what I wanted. That's what I want. And then I said, I want fifty pound appearance. And I can't tell you what he said about that. But <laughs> no. he, he went. He went and spoke to the chairman, and he come back and he went, "You got it." So if I played, I was on nearly two hundred pound a week, which was going back from when I was seventeen as an apprentice, I was getting fifteen pound a week. So I jumped from that to made like basically one ninety, wow. and you're thinking. And I thought, I'm going to be rich. <laughs> obviously, over the years, you don't realise it. Listen, it, is, it was a lot of money back then for, for a 17-year-old kid. Um, but again, if you'd have turned around and said, listen, you've got 50 quid or 60 quid, you still would have done it because listen, I, all I wanted to do was play football. And I was lucky enough to, like I said, to play under some great managers. Like My, my first one was Ron Saunders, who was a disciplinarian. Um, he ruled the roost. And... Like we are saying about training, that every Wednesday we used to have a physical day. We used to put our spikes on, and we used to, like we had like a red bra, which is a length of a foot pitch, and all we would do we would be running up and down that. And that was it. That was our training on the Wednesday. He didn't argue with me. He just done it. So again, listen, I've, I've had a, a fantastic opportunity that many people don't get. Yeah. So. Was there was was there one player that you used to sit sit there and, and sit for? Oh playing against him that day, I oh, can't, this is going to be a proper right thing to I love, you love playing against him? Not, not really, I mean, Dennis Wise sticks out, um, listen, I had loads of scraps with Dennis, um, I'd kick him, he wouldn't moan, he'd kick me, I wouldn't moan, but after, we're going to play the lounge and have a drink, mm. and that was it, but we'd done it every game we played, mm. and we, whether he was at Chelsea, whether he was at Wimbledon, or, or wherever, Leeds, we, that's what we've done. And um, Paul Allen was another one. I mean, I got sent off against Paul in a testimonial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, Upton Park. I don't count. It might have been Alvin's. Um, the referee said, listen, you've got to take these two. I'm going to send them off if you don't. So we got dragged. <laughs> um, but he was another one. And like, I see him when we were at uh, the training ground, Rush Green, because he, he works with the... the yeah. yeah. And he's going, we just used to laugh and, things like that because he was fiery as well and we just used to kick lumps out of each other 
Uh, but it's so Mar- Martin, his, his cousin, Matt, obviously. Martin, yeah, I t- Ma- Martin, he was, he was nuts. Um, I remember we, we shared a room once. I'll, I'll try and keep it clean, but we shared a room once. We, we played. <laughs> we, we, we played away, um, and we stayed in this hotel. But to get to the garage, we had to go over dual carriageways. So we would like that's the point. But we ran dual carriageway, jumped the fence, ran no one to the garage. We went in there to buy something, um, and it, we ended up buying a bag of dog food. Me and John Monker bought a bag of dog food, and I was sharing a room with Martin. So it was the, the dry food. So if you chuck water on it, just expands. And I remember I, we just poured it in Martin's bed, and we just chucked loads of water on it. And he, he come through the door, Martin, and I was I was pretending to be asleep. Monks was down the side of my bed here. And might just come in, ran in, just got in bed. And it, I, I thought we were, we were going to end up scrapping. It was, it, he went absolutely ballistic. But obviously the next day he found it, he found it quite fun. But we, we, we me and Monk still laughed about it. Yeah. No, but it's, there was many things we've we done, we done wrong. But listen, this, it's what happens. <laughs> What's your name, you guys? I was there. Shepherd Wednesday and. No, Sheffield Wednesday, then we played Everton at home. I think I was yeah, Everton at the home game. Yeah. yeah, I remember Elbow in. I think it was Gary Stevens. Yeah, I remember Elbow, Elbow in him, and he was on the floor, and fans were going mad, and that was it. That was, a, that, that was my debut, so. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, so that was 88, was it? 88, 89, yeah. 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 It's, but like I said, it's. I mean, I retired in '99. That seems forever. Mm. But obviously, it's, it's not that long ago. You said about Gary Steele. I remember he was going to work at Cup two or three weeks ago. He was on this, you know, like the overnight show on Channel 4 and Channel 5. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a really nice guy. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He might be a bit of a show. No, no, he is. He's a, he's a nice bloke. He's, he's a very nice. Do you, um, do you speak much to Tony Gale? Yeah, I speak to Gale, you know, and then, yeah. I've got to know Tony through his, obviously, sound, because of the normal casuals. Yeah. Obviously, he's come in there, and I don't know, they've been moved over to the, the, the Southern League, whatever it is now, but they've done a great job there. Do you, um, yeah, I've... Have been out there much, or? I haven't, no, but I've, I've, Gale, when I was at West Ham, he used to ring me every week. No. He don't ring me. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he left a message. His son does watch his show. Yeah, he, he comes he, on he, listen, I remember there's a story about Anthony. We, at West Ham, we used to, because Anthony's about six foot five, he he's huge. Yeah. I remember, like, back at Christmas time, when, when I first went to West Ham, around Christmas time, we used to have a kids' Christmas party at the training ground at, at Chester Leaf. And they used to go in the gym. There used to be, like, a bouncy castle and stuff like that. And I remember I put hand on there on the Banksy Castle and I'm just smashing balls at him. But like properly, smashing balls at him. <laughs> I broke his arm. Oh, I didn't realise. He's come, he's gone, Dad, my arm hurts. He went, No, oh, you'll be alright. He went, No, no, Julian kicked the ball at my arm. He went, No, you'll be alright. They took, <laughs> they took him down, got him mixed red, I broke his arm. <laughs> uh, but listen, I, like Gade, he's absolutely brilliant. I mean, yeah, I do Q&As with Tony. He came on last year, you know, and it was like, Came in and you, 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 you was just like you see him on the telly. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You just came in and you had a chat. I met him around the football grounds and, and, and I said we speak and, and again, old school, when we play him, you stay in the bar and have a yeah, yeah, yeah. Play. Yeah. But, um, no, but, but Andy's done a very good job over there and they, they had a bit of a slow start, to be fair, and they started picking up some results. Mm. Now, so they've so. done a new venture in Walton. I don't know if he spoke to you about it. No, yes, no, no. This brand of stadium they've got in and, no. and he's funded that, well, helped fund it with the. A lot of businessmen over in Hampton, and they, you know, they've done really, really well there. Yeah. Well, he must have many contacts from Sky, won't he? Well, People he chucking money yeah, in, yeah. It's all right for some. Could be a pre-season for him. Yeah, it could be. It could be a pre-season for him, you mean. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just sits in the in the stand and just screaming at the ref. I'll tell, when I first saw him, he was a bay. I said, I went down and he's going rah, rah, rah. And then when he came around last year, doing the same as always. Yeah, he's funny. He's, uh, but do you, do you find that quite? I mean, I, before we started doing this this show, sort of what, six and a half years ago, whatever it was, you didn't realise the amount of say, shall we say, celebrities that are involved in different clubs. I mean, since we've been doing it, you know, like said, Tony Gale, Matt Letizia, you've been on. The ones that have got it in their blood and love football, they need to be involved in football at, at, at any level, and it is a way to keep them involved and, and keep them there. We were to Alan Devonshire as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then he started off at Southall, West Ham side. Mm-hmm. I was there at his debut in 1976, and, and, and he, uh, he started against QPR. We never would know him. You know, you see it all winter. It was absolutely superb. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he'd come from my breathing, he'd gone back to it. Yeah, as soon as he packed, as soon as he packed it at West Ham, you know, he just fell out, just fell out, straight back in there. To my league, I think he was at, he was at um, I think Star Love at Maidenhead originally, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Club. Yeah. then went to Hampton, mm. Hampton Richmond, and then you know. So he's probably done 20 years in non league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Please. But again, you know, somebody that's done that, done that sort of sport in that, and again, you'd think there'd be somebody, even if it was in the right side of second division, first division, and look at someone like other division. You, know. you would do, but unfortunately, no, you're not a good coach unless you've got badges. That's the problem. And these people that powers to be yeah. thinks that's the right thing, which clearly is not because Alan Devonshire has got so much experience to somebody who's got their pro license, has never managed before. Dev is like, see, he's got 20 years in non league, but he can't get a job because, hang on a minute, you don't have a B license. How bad is that? You don't want, obviously, 
when you went into a stand, did, did you have to do that? I'm I'm, I'm in my middle of my A anyway, so, so it's not, it's, you it's, don't it's, have to. You don't. It, it's not. I'm on the understanding. Like obviously, Slab's got his pro license, no. and Nicholas got his. You don't have to have your badges there. Obviously, you have to be seen to be doing them yeah. and things like. But they're they're not. But if you want to manage, you have to have. Does it, doing the, the, what you're doing there, does it wind you up a little bit the way it's sort of so textbook sort of structured? There isn't sort of you could stamp your own. Yeah, I mean, I've done my B in Wells, um, and they were they were oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were brilliant. It was a case of listen, if I want to get the ball and just smash it out of field. That's the way I play. Listen, you can't tell me that's right. You can't tell me that's wrong. Mm. So they, they put things on and go, right, how would you deal with this? How would you do it in your style of, mm. of football? But obviously, like the English FA, they have a lot of bad press. Mm. Um, and they do. Everything, everything is textbook. You have to do it this way or it's no way, which is wrong mm. because everybody coaches different. Yeah. What I think is right or what you think is mm. right could be a million miles apart. Yeah. But we're all going to, towards the, the, the same goal, which is winning games. Mm -hmm. So you might play the best attractive football mm -hmm. ever, might not win games. Mm -hmm. I might just launch it for fun yeah. and win games. Mm -hmm. So there's no right or wrong. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, if you haven't got your badges, then <laughs> it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's wrong because there's, there's so many people out there that have a lot of experience, that want to get involved, yeah. that don't want to do their badges. Yeah. It's not a case yeah. of... They, they they can't listen. They're expensive to do, but they don't want to do their badges. They don't want to sit in the classroom. Yeah. They don't want to do this. Like your A lighting is like twelve, fourteen months, mm. and that's a long time to be doing a badge. They used to do fast tracks for. I was going to say, did you? Have, well, I was kind of surprised. You said you had to do your B. I thought you. I done my fast, B fast I, on a fast track. That was that was nine days. Mm. Um, it was every day up in Wells, like morning, afternoon, and night time. And it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It was it was good fun because you do your classroom bit, then in the afternoon you'd be going back. You're going out to coach, and basically you co you were coaching. Some of them were not like kids, but they're like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. Um, and you have put your, your session on for them, and then on the evening it was back in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. But an A like fourteen months. You know, I mean, it's it's not right. It's yeah. not right. Well, I'm, I don't say that quite often on the show, but those two hours were absolutely flying by. And uh, I, to be really honest with you, I just hope everybody at home has enjoyed it as much as I have listened to Julian talking tonight. And of course, Gary as well, it's been, it really has been fantastic. I really appreciate you coming in, uh, both of you. Um, really, really do. And wish Hayley Swifts all the very best for the rest of the season. Thank you. Is yours the least or is it trophy or something? Oh, yeah, I would say to you guys, you know, don't be strangers if you want to come back in and it's something you want to promote, then give us a shout. I'd mean, love to have you back on again later on in the season. It'd be fantastic. Yeah. Um, next week, uh, me and Keith will be joined by, um, I suppose the lost two, I suppose, Paul Wickington and Terry Spray. <laughs> they'll be joining us, uh, they'll be joining us uh, next oh, week. Me, on the show. Yeah, what are they? They're sort of lost in the wilderness, but they'll be back. But uh, the, the, those guys, they'll be joining us. Don't forget, it. Uh, the show's out on Audio Boom. That'll be out later as well. We'll also put it out. We've also been recording it through Ecamp Live. So anybody that's been saying it's on the side a little bit, don't worry, it'll be out there as well later on tonight as well. But uh, so massive thank you to Julian. Massive thank you to Gary. Uh, and of course, a massive thank you for keeping joining us again tonight. And uh, until then, hopefully you get all the uh, results you want at the weekend. But until then, good night. <laughs> Three nil to chest. Are you playing the weak inside, are they? Or? No, believe it or not. I would say that they've got. I don't know what the normal chest team is, but. Uh, no, he's injured. They've got, they've got, they've got a massive giant up front. Is it near his toilets here? Just right through that door, Jim. Just there, there you go, mate. Okay. Okay, right. Yeah,